Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. Because of podcasts, we are connected to the outside world from our bodies. Like when you smell things, because when you smell a smell, it's not really a smell. It's part of the object that has come off of it. Podcasts. So when you smell something bad, it's like in a way you're eating it. This is why you should not really smell things in the same way you don't eat everything in the world around you because as a smell, it gets inside you. So the next time you go into the bathroom after someone else has been there, remember what kind of podcast you are in fact eating. It's not a bad Elijah. Thank you, teen, teen Elijah. One of two yeah. reasons I reset. Oh, because you actually wanted to get the voice? I want to get the voice right, and I also want to say podcast more than 15 times. Podcast. Podca- what's, podcast. What would your line have been? Elijah, podcast. Uh, my line would have been, uh, you're touching that reckless jerk off for God's sake. He's trying to get into your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's yep. it. I mean, that's a great one. I almost did the Ricci. You can take your pants off and I'll podcast it, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of good lines. There are a lot theory. of good. Yeah. That was a, I was like trying to avoid replacing penis with podcast. Sure. <laughs> which yeah. are a lot of the best options in this movie. Right. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Griffin Newman. My name is David Sims. And this is Blank Check with Griffin and David. <laughs> It's Thanks. a podcast about filmographies, directors who have massive success early on in their careers and are given a series of blank checks to make whatever crazy passion products they want. Mm. And sometimes those checks clear and sometimes they, ooh, 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 they storm, baby. Okay. They freeze over. Ooh, burr. They get electrocuted. Burr. <laughs> All right, enough. Teeth shittering. <laughs> this is a main series on the films of Ang Lee. Yeah. It's called Broke Pod Mount Cats. <laughs> Sure. Rolls off the tongue. Sure. It's fun because our guests never know what the podcast is called. Yes. Yes. And this is my conditional favorite of his films. Mm. Yeah. It's up there for me. It is my favorite of his films that doesn't star a Marvel superhero. <laughs> right. Right. Uh huh. That just features it textually. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, it's called The Ice Storm. This is probably the second best Fantastic Four movie ever made. I, oh, I was, had that thought. <laughs> I was just going to say it was the, the best one. Incredibles. Yeah. I know you're not an Incredibles fan. Yeah, Emily doesn't like I Brad know Emily Bird. doesn't like Brad Bird. Oh, I like The Incredibles, okay? It's just like the crazy, the most Randian of all of them. So I like that movie fine. I, I mean, look, we, at this Tomorrow point, we've dug into it. We've, du- we've raked over these coals. We yeah. have. We did it I, all. Yeah. We talked about it and we came to no conclusive <laughs> answers because his <laughs> filmography is confusing. <laughs> Because he is a perplexing public figure. Yes. A textual Gordian <laughs> knot. Oh, that's one of your blank check bingos. Yeah. yeah I'm trying like to reestablish one. the terms. I want people to get big bingo scores. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is The Ice Storm. It is 1997 <clears throat> masterpiece. It, it's a fantastic movie. It's a phenomenal film. And um, represents an interesting point in his career. Okay. I would argue. Go on. Um... It's it's not a check. It's bounce. his first American film, really. Fully American. You're saying. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. It's also the first film he wanted to make after the Father Knows Best trilogy. Oh, interesting. And he got h- hired essentially to make Sense and Sensibility. Yeah. So like he he had this one already cooking. Look, this movie opened some doors for him. He was able to make this movie because of some doors that were opened by his previous work. Uh huh. But our guest on the show today, this movie was a big door opener for her. <laughs> This movie changed my life, man. This movie fucking changed your life. <laughs> you played this movie with candles, and it changed I, your life. I, I I gave you a set of headphones, and I uh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Listen to the ice. Storm. Listen to the ice storm. Just just the audio. Track. You heard a sad oboe. Yeah. <laughs> some 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 mournful flutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hi hi guys. You know who that is. It's the hi. mother of blankies herself, hi. host of Night Call. Emily Ishida is back in the studio. Hello. Hey Emily. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me back. I feel like I was just on, but... But not I, really. Not in podcast time. In real time, uh, it's been about 15 minutes since the last episode you recorded. Yeah. But you, let me look at your Wikipedia Podcast entry. time, it's been about six months. 
<clears throat> um, oh, yeah. No, the, your guys' Wikipedia, this is like a relatively new discovery for me. Mm-hmm. You, you're, I didn't create this, or neither did. Really? No, no, no. No, 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 no. You didn't spend all your your spare time that you have uh, yeah. <laughs> creating, a, yeah. creating a Wikipedia about your own podcast? Um, no, it's incredible. Uh, it's my first Wikipedia page that I'm aware or hey. like wiki page that I'm aware of hey. with my face on it. But I, I want to, I, 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 I don't want to do something this petty. And yet, I do want do to have the, the picture replaced on it. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Do you I'm have sure a specific picture a you picture want? Replaced. or is I that... have a staff photo that I just got okay. from, from New York Mag, my, my, my place of employ. And I, uh, I feel like it would be a more appropriate picture to have on it because I look very podcast ready in the picture. Whereas that one, I'm like on vacation in Berlin and I look really chill and that's like not my podcast not persona. Yourself. So it's more <laughs> that the new picture is so apt for the entry rather than that the old picture is like... I have like there's one own, picture that people your, use of me assume, all the time that I hate. It was a Twitter avatar. It was my yours, Twitter. Was, yeah, okay, it's my yes. Twitter avatar. I, I've been meaning to change it for a long time because my hair hasn't looked like that for over a year. But yeah, it whatever. It's fine. I'll say this: some of our guests on the show have said that their wiki entries for the blank check wiki are better than their own professional like bios. Well, I'd love to. Ha- I'd love to know what that's like. I'd love to have. Oh, wait, you mean like a professional, like a, a on wikipedia.com? No, they're like the blankies <laughs> bio that they've written for me is mm. better than the one that I use for my work. Oh, so you want to like port it over. That's oh. what I've heard other people who have been on our show have said that. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, good job to whoever runs that thing. That's Yeah. All our, all our blankies. It's a collective effort, I assume. Yeah. Right? Aren't wikis yeah, it's usually? The dudes I don't really know how they work. Yeah. Down in Fraggle Rock. Anyway, this is your sixth <laughs> or seventh episode. Joining the Six Timers Club. Wait, wait, wait. No, it's your seventh episode. Well, right. it depends. I forgot about L. Yeah. No, L. it's your eighth if you t- split Titanic. What? Yeah. Podcast Reawakens, My, Speed Racer. If I could drop this mic, I would, and I would, I would exit <laughs> Emily's throwing her hands up. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm proud to be victorious like here. Wait, where's, where's, where's Lawson? Where's Lawson? Oh, no, no I, I'm wrong. It's your seventh or Thank sixth. You. Thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, but I will say... I saw Richard recently. I did too. And he was like asking about future. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I think I mentioned that you were going to be on the Ice Storm episode. Uh-huh. And he was like, so that would make her, is that, would that be her mm-hmm. sex? We had, we had a, 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 a very um, heated slash drunk tete-a-tete about our rankings yes. <laughs> among the hosts, knowing that we are neck and neck. Um, and with yeah. JD as well. With JD, yeah. but he wasn't at the, he, yeah. he, he wasn't with us at that moment, but I feel like there's some light competition. I feel like, we're going to yeah, start. Richard's yeah. done five, and this is your sixth, assuming we're counting Titanic. That was one yeah, recording yeah. session. It was yeah. just a very long one. I mean, Ehrlich in an episode that has been recorded but hasn't come out yet throws down the gauntlet that he wants to be the first person to join the 25 Timers Club. So All he's right. behind. Who, who did that? Who Ehrlich. Was? Oh, yeah, right. He yeah, wants right. to post yeah, Baldwin go for numbers. It, Ehrlich. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how is he, I mean, you guys would have to do like an entire television season or something with him or, I don't know. How would, how would, how would you jump up to 25? Uh, Unless if, if we did a fast bender mini series and we let him guess multiple times for people who have really long filmographies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. King Vidor. <laughs> Bud Boddicker. <laughs> yeah. I don't fucking know. Buster Keaton. Richard Flesher. <laughs> okay. Someone suggested Buster Keaton recently. It's I like just, 46 I, films. Per year. I mean, it would be a lot of like, in this one, he, uh, you know, I don't know, rode the rails. I'd be like, you hey, know. Hey, everyone's a masterpiece. Sure. Except for the ones that aren't. He's made a lot of mediocre movies. But his best films are the best. Anyway, today we're talking about The Ice Storm. <sighs> and as alluded to. Emily. Yeah. This film plays a very important role in your I mean, life. You, you you pitched yourself <clears throat> right at this one. Yeah. This this movie, well, I've watched it many times, but mostly because I want to say in the year 2005, I wrote a uh, an essay, my critical essay to for my second shot getting into the UCLA School of Film and Television because I did not get in the first time mm-hmm. I applied. Were you already at UCLA and you were trying to get into the no, school? It's I, like within? Okay. Well. So I'd been at Loyola Marymount mm-hmm. in LA Ooh, sure. and uh and then hated it and left school for a year and was and uh I had applied to get into UCLA for the next year didn't get in so I took a year off cuz right. that was like the only place I was going to cool. go and then I tried again and I got in 
Uh, and I wrote my critical essay on the ice storm. Hells, yes. Yeah. And it, and I got in. So. And it changed your life? Thank you. Yeah. It changed, it changed my life. I, uh, I, I made a lot of really strong points about Nixon and power and authority and, uh, uh, what else? What else? Um, well, so I was, <laughs> I was telling David cause I found it. And then I stupidly forgot to bring it in, but I think I'll try to like read it as part of it, at least some point later in the podcast. I, I was reading through it and it, you know, it's cringy always to read anything you wrote when you were younger that, that, that much I understand. I don't think that's unusual, but I also realized that like the overall gist of it and, uh, the, the kind of climax of the essay is basically the same as, uh, an essay I wrote like last month about annihilation. So now I'm 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 riding the the ice storm is annihilation tip and that's going to be um, any any opportunity we get to, to make the ice storm into, the, into annihilation. I'll so, say I rewatched it last night and independently came to that bridge between the two films. Really, I think they're two of the films that best uh, a visualize depression. Yeah, yeah. There, there's something very subtle in both films, and obviously one's more of a heightened genre thing, one's more of a slice of life thing. But I like. I think this movie gets cold weather as right as do the right thing gets hot weather. Oh, that's such a good point. Mm. Yeah, that's that's very true. And I think in the same way that do the right thing is able to like marry that hot weather to a sense of like rage. Yeah. This marries it to a sense of malaise and yeah. depression where every shot in this yeah, movie this just movie. feels sad without being yeah. like melancholic or or operatic you know well, it's, it's like everything slight. grinding to a halt like yeah. the way that right. the molecules stop moving you know the, 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 the negative zone stops yeah. going to new canaan yeah right and then in the negative zone it's a movie very precise sort of uh aesthetics in that way and also this movie does not get enough credit for how good the sound is oh the sound is great unbelievable yeah. and goes really far in terms of selling all the ice because like i yeah. watched a lot of the special features last night when i couldn't sleep and um, they talk about the fact that they filmed it in, like, the spring. And oh, it was, wow. like, a little chilly. They used a bunch of hair products, like hairsprays, for when you need, like, the sort of frosting on things. Oh. Hmm. But other than that, most of when you see ice in the film, it's, like, plastic. plastic. Right. Or when it's wet, it's gel. Yeah. I, I knew it was um, uh, spring because it's, it's so green. Yes. It's a right. very verdant movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But every time there's, like, a step... In the film, the ice sounds are so precise, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it's Elijah Wood stepping yeah. foot by foot, boot by boot onto the diving the board. Or the slow motion across the field. All like, that stuff. Yeah. And like the crunch of his boots, like not just the crunch of the ice under the boots, but it's the a crunch movie. of it's a the movie. boots are so frozen that flexing the boots. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I love the idea of it being the, the do the right thing for for winter and depression. Right. <laughs> I, th I think it's the do the right thing for, for waspy <laughs> yeah. cold depression. Right, right. Well, yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. is like, what happens when rich white people like build to yeah. a heavy, oh, yeah. it gets very cold and everyone stops <laughs> moving. Well, and I... Someone very quietly dies. <laughs> well, I connected to this movie also, like, all of the elements and the milieu of this movie is like an alien landscape. Like, we was at the point that I first saw this movie, which would have been in high school. Um, I, yeah, I guess it would have been high school or junior high or something. I, like, I didn't know, like, I didn't know that you could take a train to Connecticut from New York. Like, mm -hmm. who does that? Like, <laughs> I didn't know that, like, uh, yeah, I didn't know, like, what a boarding school was. I didn't understand where he was going to school. I didn't understand sure. any of these, like, signifiers of, like, what kinds of people these are. I just connected to it on a purely, like, emotional level like teenage level and everything and then as i watched it later it was like okay i understand like this is for some people this would be a very strong like nostalgic yes, document it's evocative mm -hmm. of a type of a yeah, person in a but, community yes yeah i only kind of picked up on that later because i'm just like i was just east coast dumb for for many many years um and uh yeah but i still i it also was the first film that i remember as like a young you know teenage viewer trying you know collecting my mind about how to watch movies and everything and realizing like oh this was made or written by a guy who's like in his 40s now who's like writing in about like at the time that he grew up in mm -hmm. right and like this is going to happen every every decade sure. like, right. we're sure. gonna so, and the next thing i remember thinking that about and having that realization about was uh was Freaks and Geeks. Sure. And I was like, we're just going to follow, we're going to travel our way through the 80s now and just have that 
that wave of nostalgia that kind of moves along with whatever generation is in creative power. Absolutely. Right. You um, get Landline, which is our generation's The Ice Storm. Yeah, it really. Yeah, except, totally. <laughs> bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> except <laughs> not that good. <laughs> David and I were talking about how this movie for both of us, and I didn't know if other people felt this way, but mm. you volunteered this information where you're like, oh, weird, we're on the same page about this. And I feel like if you saw this movie in high school sure. or younger, it functions yeah. this way. This was like a big sexual movie for me because this is one of the movies that deals with sex in a very odd way without being like yep. a sex movie. Yeah. yeah, I think I was too young to see this movie. I think I saw it when I was like 13. I think I saw 13. And I was yeah. uh, like, I was like, think I was probably seeing a movie like American Pie at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm. Those are very different exactly. messages about sex and teens right, in right. America. <laughs> American Pie, I'm like, wait, is this, this is how it's all going to work? And this, I'm like, wait, so no one just, no one even takes their clothes off? Like, you're, it's you're just, just like it's miserable. comedy sex, which is very objective based. And then if weird things happen, they're like gross out gags. And then this movie deals with like weird psychologies. Like they're like, wait! I thought it was just putting stuff in other things. What are these other yeah. acts that are happening? Do you have to wear a Nixon mask? Right. <laughs> but even the yeah, whole for me, a Richie character, I mean, where it's like, that's which really... one does she like? Doesn't she have a crush on one boy? It... Why is she going back and forth yeah, between yeah, the yeah, two yeah, of yeah. them? Well, I, 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 I could understand that. <laughs> I'm just saying, all yes. these things are like, this is a movie that isn't cut and dry. Both between the teenagers who are figuring out their sexuality and the adults who are trying to redefine their sexuality, yeah, honestly, all of it's strange. The teen stuff, I almost had a better handle. On. It was the adult oh, stuff that I was very, a better very confused on the by. Stuff. The key yeah. party thing broke my brain. <laughs> right, I knew what that was, kind of, but it did. I mean, it still kind of breaks my brain to watch it. Well, the first time I ever heard of this film was in, I think, Seventeen magazine or something, because there was some little blurb or profile of it was either Elijah Wood or Christina Ricci, sure. and both of those actors were very important to me as a young person. Christina Ricci was huge for yeah, me. Yeah, she, was, she, she was me. She was Wednesday Adam. Um, I mean, look, only 90s kids will understand, but Christina Ricci was. Yeah, she was, she was a cr- incredibly formative to I was going to ask you that. Is, was she like a yeah. Emily Yoshida uh, avatar? Right? Yeah. This is like from Wednesday Adams on. Right. Casper, and, um, Casper's a master. Yeah, a little bit of Casper. I, I didn't really watch that one that much, but I had a huge crush on Elijah Wood. Um, also, and so sure. then I heard that they were so. So this the Seventeen magazine article, which is like not equipped to really like discuss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, right. And I started. I was like, they have a hot on screen smooching scene, and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be the biggest thing in the world. This is gonna blow my <laughs> little mind. And then I didn't actually see the film for. I don't think I saw it, and I definitely didn't see it in theaters. Um, I don't know how soon once it came to home video, I saw it, but I was like, oh, this is like not really hot. It's more like kind of sad and weird. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's weird that the next year she made the opposite of sex. Like she yeah. went yes. from playing like an awkward fourteen-year-old to playing like a femme fatale, essentially. And she says that in the book, the character is written as more of a conventional femme fatale. Right in the book, I think she's sleeping with boys and girls. There's multiple uh, and, scenes, and she's of that. kind of a traditional Lolita type. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she said that Angley wanted to work with her. She felt like she was very much in her awkward stage. Yeah. And he molded the character around her current persona. She was older. She was like 17 when she made this movie. Yeah. Yeah. But, she, yeah, she just look, looks really young. because well, she's, she's so got awkward. those chubby cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in this movie has chubby cheeks. But she's also in like Even one of those Katie weird Holmes. teenage periods where you're like, your neck is not in proportion to the yeah, rest right. of your body. Like parts yeah. of your body are growing faster than well, others. Also, the thing that I find so endearing about this character, I feel like is like just the tell about everything you need to know about this character from the first... Well, really, from the first scene that she's in when she's watching TV is that she's got she is always covering herself up yeah, from the neck right. down. Right. Like she is just so not sure how to feel about her body, even though she's like doing all this precocious stuff. Mm-hmm. She's still clearly extremely uncomfortable about everything. And, you know, it's like half half the scene. She's wearing this like cape that is just like a tent <laughs> over her body. Yes. Yeah. Um, which feels important. <laughs> yeah. It, it's uh, I, I don't know. She's it's a it's a great it's a great teenage teen character even though it's an amazing teen character yeah i i remember the idea of her mom seeing her biking and like Ugh. being like oh she seems different like yeah because uh, yeah. like, no one's looking at her yeah. yeah and it's like the mom says this really profound thing and christina ricci's like shut the fuck You're up yeah, i don't yeah, want to yeah. deal with emotions right she's now. like are you don't drunk make me think about you like a person <laughs> yeah yeah well that's also good joan allen is very well cast and she's yeah. playing this person where she's like i had a, a thought <laughs> About your internal, like, you just look thinking. very free. Right. 
Kevin and Klein tells, is like, Jesus, what the fuck? What are you talking about? <laughs> Kevin Klein tells this story on like one of the retrospective Criterion documentaries where uh, he walked by Joan Allen and she was sitting somewhere around location, like not in her trailer pointedly okay. with the script and with a cigarette. Oh sort God. of like staring off into the middle distance in like a very Joan Allen way. Oh and he God. was just like, she's so fucking intense. Like, look at just the amount of energy she's putting into this thing. And then he was like, should I be doing that? Is that like, is she a better <laughs> actor than me? And then he went to the craft service table. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin he, Klein's a, oh, Kevin. you know, he's a, a personality actor. Yeah. yeah, you know, right. like he just, I don't know. Well, he's, he's very technical, but like Joan Allen's one of these technical. people where like, Joan Allen is one of those actors who sometimes the moves she's doing are almost imperceptible. It's like it just feels like she's internalizing as much as she can. Mm-hmm. And then they call action and she tries to move as little as possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, um, but this is like she she said uh, she was very disappointed by the response to this movie because this was she thought the best movie she's ever been. in. Wow. She still thinks it's the best film she's ever been oh. in. And you kind of get the sense of, like, this is kind of the perfect Joan Allen mm-hmm, character. Mm-hmm. And you imagine her going, like, this is it. This is the one. Yeah. This She's is my, like, movie. you know. So I'm not really aware of the response to it at all, but I don't know if that's something you guys want to discuss now, uh, we, top or later. I yeah. Mean, it opened at the Cannes Film Festival. We can talk about it. So, like, like yeah. I said, he, James Seamus read this book, like, I think even before it was published. The book's published in 94. And he brings it to Ang Lee and he says, like, oh, my God, like you said, like, this movie means a lot. I mean, this book means a lot to me. And Ang Lee loves it. He loves the image of the father finding the dead child and then crying. Like, he's like that. He's like, yes, that's a movie. Like, I, this, <laughs> this smells like an Ang Lee movie. So he wants to make it. And then he gets hired onto Sense and Sensibility. So this movie mm. gets sort of uh, delayed and then it gets made. But but they said they were filming this when Sense and Sensibility got the Oscar nominations. Right. So, so it was I guess like they, it was yeah. a pretty quick cash in. They probably made it in yeah, right, in like early ninety six. Tobe McGuire said he went up to him on set that day and said, Congratulations, and he said, What? <laughs> like he was just like so kind of into his thing. But this was like he was just kind of moving along. Like Angley was gonna keep on making films. This mm-hmm. film was at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. It wins best screenplay? Won best screenplay, which is you know, a minor Cannes award, mm-hmm. but still. Uh it uh was well received, I think. It was released by Fox Searchlight, who are like yeah. you know, an awards mm-hmm. studio, but it was released in September. And really? it yeah, and I was just looking it up, and it said November. Lies. The thing September twenty seventh. The thing Sigourney said is that they kind of got boned, not Sigourney's words, by Titanic and Full Monty, because Fox had those two films that fall. They had the biggest movie of all time. Yeah, and then they had this weird breakout indie success. I think the thing they really got boned by was the Full Monty because right. Titanic doesn't come out obviously for quite a while longer. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, the Full Monty's out by the time this comes out, and Fox right. tries to platform it in the same way. They open it small. Yeah, yeah. it's the most miserable movie ever made. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of money. Uh, it gets no Oscar nominations. You know, I mean, it was like planned as like an Oscar player. You right. know, you got Kevin Klein. He's like a, at that certainly at that point still a very respected star. But they like, could have sold it on the like the the swinging. Angle right. more. They, do not. they don't. Have you seen the trailer? Which I respect. <laughs> have you seen the trailer? <laughs> yeah. The trailer's weird. I haven't oh, wait, seen the trailer. Which one? Wait. There's a trailer that's on the DVD that's like uh it's it's very like everyone can't stop sleeping with everyone oh. else. Oh, yeah. it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well the, the posters wow. and the advertising. The posters are very fucking like, sad. Yeah. This is gonna be as bummer. Yeah. We're all gonna stare into the cold and yes. think about death. There's um, also that weird French poster that's like ice cubes. Oh, weird. Uh, but weird. it's not That looks good. extremely 90s. Yeah, it's, yes. The I, other one is kind of like you could place it anytime within like 20 years. Yeah. Or so. The no. ice storm. And then there's this the DVD cover, one. which is not the slivers of the faces. The DVD cover is the one I'm most familiar yeah. with. Um, I'll get it for you guys. I think Sigourney's I'm point on the computer. was not that the ice storm was having screens taken away from it by Titanic, but more that... They thought this was going to be a you big... They put their thing. resources behind right. it. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Right. In terms of making an Oscar movie, which no, would yeah, then yeah, yeah. translate into but eyeballs, it was never... Full Monty broke that, and then they had the front runner, and well, it was Right, just but also like... the Full Monty made like $100 million. Right, right. exactly. And yeah, it was 45, I take fun. it back. But, you know, the Ice Storm just wasn't a hit. Yeah. I think the reviews were like respectful, but not the kind of rush to see it reviews that maybe you would want. Sure. For... 
Uh, Sigourney so got nominated for a Globe. She, she did, won she the BAFTA. She won the BAFTA, which is bizarre. It's That's very strange. That, it's just a small role. It's so weird. I mean, I love her. I mean, I think everybody, all the lead cast is great in this movie. But yes. like, she she's would the not least, be the one that I would pick. Not at all. I mean, uh, she's like, good. Yeah, she's great. But she doesn't have like great some pants. big moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think great it's pants. such a good performance. But I also no, I but, love I mean, it's, Sigourney in general. Yeah, but it would Sigourney, be like my sixth yeah. favorite performance in the movie. Really? Like, yeah. Yeah. I think she's like two or three for me. What? Yeah. She's the like kids, highest though. like four for me. I yeah. Think. I, I like think, all three kids have to be in there and then Klein and Allen. Like they all beat. Uh, Tom Holtz is the number one best performance <laughs> in this film. <laughs> so David, uh, I am uh, a well-known garbage belly. You are. You eat uh, terrible things. And my body suffers from it. Yes. It doesn't. It's not like you can handle it. No, not it's at all. It's bad for you. No, I don't right. have the stamina right. to you eat, eat what I eat. You eat bad things and bad things happen to you as a right. result. Uh, just finished filming season two of The Tick. Sure. And my body has been collapsing. Okay. okay. I felt like garbage. Okay. I think it's just the stress of everything, right? I was feeling sick the other day. Uh-huh. My appetite's totally gone. Okay. And it's that thing where it's like, I know I need to eat. You, sounds like you need to see a doctor, but okay. You're hungry. Right, I'm probably or, dying. You, you need to, all right, you need to eat. But but I've had this a lot recently where I've just been working so much and like physically demanding stuff that then my like appetite's gone. Okay. And any meal looks dying to me. And you know what I, I genuinely do? What? I reach for an RX bar. Which is your like number one favorite blank check product. You love Without these things. Without question. I love these things. You love the RX bar. First of all, it tastes good. Second okay. of all, I know it's actually healthy for me. Like They've it got contains- all the ingredients right on the front. They, they label the, every bar with everything that's in it. So you got like Egg whites, dates, nuts, you know, chocolate, right? Fruit, spices. Like, like it's just all right on there. Egg whites, dates, almonds. You're listing things I don't like. Right. Take them apart. Griffin's not into it. Not at all. Put them in a bar. And people go, oh, this is healthy for you. And I go, I'm not going to touch it. Not interested. You put it in a bar and then tell me, hey, it's peanut butter chocolate flavored. I will eat it. There's some savory options. Yeah. There's some sweet options. Yeah. Peanut butter and berries. You like that one? Yeah. Chocolate sea salt. Right. So that, you got a little more of a kick in that guy. Mango pineapple. You're going sweet. Right. The you blueberry know? flavor. I mean, I, I like them all, honestly. Yeah. Apple um, cinnamon. Yeah. It's like yeah. A, it's like a pie. Yeah. And it really is. It's like, uh, I, you know, it, it feels like the best, most sustainable snack I can have. Uh, you can eat it for breakfast. They're a good snack. They They're a little the energy pocket. boost. They're perfect pocket food. Pocket food. And egg white protein, it's like easy for your body to absorb it. Which, once again, like I, notorious egg hater speaking over You don't here, like eggs, right? but you I like our eggs bars. I like them too, but you're, you're, the, you're the acolyte. This is the only egg delivery system that I have ever enjoyed. So listen up. For 25% off your first order, you just go to rxbar.com slash check and enter promo code check at checkout. Or if you don't want them, you can also just order them and send them to me. Yes. I will gladly eat them. I enjoy these things. Rxbar.com slash check and then make out the address out Casa Griffin. Yeah, Casa Griffin, 1717 him. Griffin Boulevard. Do we think at this time that Krumholtz is hotter than McGuire? That's my question. Uh, uh, ooh, define hotness in terms of career they, or in terms of physical attraction? In terms of pulling down ladies because, you know, oh. he's kind of a ladies man and McGuire's like the, the dork here. Oh, but, I think that, I mean, McGuire is like on his path to pussy pussy. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. That's what like, I'm saying. Not, it's like, like, this is, this is, this is the tragedy of David Krumholtz. He never got a pussy posse and he like, he never even got and then Oscar membership. Isaac came along and like took his career away from <laughs> yeah. him and like he, while he was on numbers, he's like, cool, I'm on numbers. I can, right. I, I'm, I'm pulling down I'm a set paycheck. for life. And Oscar Isaac was like, what if 5% less Jewish? <laughs> yeah, right, And America exactly. was like, yes! <laughs> Star Wars, please! <laughs> um, I, I, I used to, my, my, my boyfriend in college, we always used to joke Humble that brand. he, <laughs> he uh, couldn't have a career at, at the time. This was like in the mid-2000s. That he could not have a career because of David Krumholtz. Was you, did you have a Krumholtzy boyfriend? I had a very Krumholtz Krumholtzian? Boyfriend. Wow, yeah. Krumholtzian. All right. Um, he was... Uh, well, this this relates to another movie I watched, kind of as 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 a as a companion piece to Ice Storm. Mm. But he's a little Elliot Gouldy. Um, oh, yeah, and, I mean yeah. Elliot Gould is one of the hottest. Well, I was bitches I in was the game. I was tweeting about Elliot Gould the other day. I, you and were. I was, I was reminiscing. Which which but, Gould did you rewatch? 
Uh, I well, so uh, over the weekend, I watched. Um, I saw a long goodbye at Alamo. Oh, that's one which, from the Golden Age. Oh, from it really is. You were it's you from were the Golden not, Age. It, it didn't even matter what I what I answered. Uh, you but I was hoping that was going to be the answer. <laughs> yeah, she said like Ocean's Thirteen. <laughs> I would have been a little bone. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched like select episodes of Friends. Yeah, I would have been uh, fucked if you had done that. <laughs> Uh, no, and then uh, and then I watched uh, uh, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Oh yeah, I mean sure. another Golden Age, maybe the start of the Golden Age. Yeah, that's the start. That, was, of that the, was the beginning of the Golden Age. Yeah, I don't think the night they raided Minsky's was the start of the Golden Age. I just like referencing the night they raided. <laughs> Harry and Walter take New York. Uh, I think that might be later. I'm not sure. That's a later film. I'm yeah. saying that's maybe towards the end of the. Oh, Golden you're Age. saying? Oh, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they took New York. I'm still living in the golden age. I don't care whatever yeah. anybody yeah. says. What a, what uh, that's a, the um, thing. Gould's still kind of charming. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously oh, yeah. he's an older man. Yeah. He's an older gentleman. But uh, He gives a good know. interview. He's, I was reading a lot of, like, recent interviews of his. I like, forget. Like, you know Griffin knows him, right? I oh. mean, no. Because they were on a TV show together. Have I ever told Fantastic. my my Gould story? On I air? Because he told it to me. I have the one that's worth telling. All right. So I, He's I, in this movie, right? That's why we're talking about him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're staying really on track. So if I had if I had boys like Karen Hanna, he would be he would be in Emily's boys. Right, yes, yeah, of course. For sure. Yeah. Oh, he's a Griff guy one hundred percent. Yeah, he's a David's dude. I don't know. <laughs> um I uh he he was on uh Mulaney. Mm. Uh the one episode of Millennium that I was on that no one ever saw. The pilot that was never aired. Right. The single greatest piece of television. <laughs> Let's Lost just tell everyone culture. that. Lost of pop culture. Um, but but he's one of my ultimate uh, guys. And so that was like uh, the embarrassment of riches was like getting to work with him and spend a lot of time with him. Because when you do multi-camera stuff, a lot of it's like sitting around. It's like a school play. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're just like hanging out in the rafters yeah. waiting for them to call you up for your scene. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time with him and we bonded a lot talking about anxiety and depression. <laughs> he like I he, I was like, oh, my God, Elliot Gould's about to become my father figure. Aww. And then I <laughs> kind of was I felt so wounded after I got fired off the show that I got his personal information. I never had the courage to reach out to him again, and I haven't talked to him since. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you reached out to him and he didn't respond. I you was still- so worried that would happen that I didn't want to put myself out there. I'm sure. I bet he would have. I think he would have because he he's a real match. And I, I feel like we connected. And um, like I that week or two that we were working together, I was like, this is going to be the next eight years of my life. This could be unbelievable. He's going to get help me get a good head on my shoulders. <laughs> right before we went out to film the episode – he put his hand on my shoulder and he went, your family, they didn't show affection that much, did they? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, right before I'm about to, like, enter. And then you just, like, have tears yeah. streaming down your face because but, Elliot Gold is stared into your soul. And But he said, like, you. there was one night where we had, like, dinner at, like, the Ivy with, like, Lauren Michaels and everybody. And he kind of keyed in on me and he's like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm just trying to stay calm. And he's like, that's an interesting choice of words. C A. L M calm. And then he was like, can I give you something? And I went, sure. <laughs> and the next day on set on the back of his sides, so he didn't, he, he, he's, you said, sure. And then that was the end of that conversation. Said, and then the quote, next day, said, there's a quote I want to give you uh-huh. when I go home, I'm going to write it down. I'll bring it for you in the morning. Okay. And he wrote it on the back of his script page. And it's, I have this framed on my wall. Oh my God. You just brought, it took you five seconds to bring that up on your phone. Where the world ceases, saved my favorites. Where the world ceases to be the scene of our personal hopes and wishes, where we face it as free beings, admiring, asking, and observing. There we enter the realm of art and science. Albert Einstein. <laughs> I have to go take a break. Right? <laughs> That's my most prized possession my entire life. Now, why am I talking about this for five minutes? Because I want to believe that Elliot Gould's listening to this. He's going to reach out to me and say, sure. I missed you. Gouldy, he loves podcasts yeah. <laughs> about movies he wasn't in. And he loves David Crumholtz. Right, loves starring Crumholtz. young men who yeah. kind of have like a slight vibe yeah. of his, you know, sort of like a hairy chested <laughs> Jew vibe. I think they that. They could really like put Barbara Streisand on his shoulder. I think oh. to get back on these frozen train tracks. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think that Maguire's whole thing at the time, as Molly's game sort of illustrated, was being the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, yes yeah. of course. Not just that he played this sort of know, sad that's, sack that's guys, but also that in Sarah. life it sounds like that was kind of his move. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm but, sure that they were flip-flop behind the scenes. I think this. so. Absolutely. I, yeah. I think he's already 
you know, it's already fired up because he makes this boy's life with Leo in 93. Yeah, right, right, So right. they're already in Everybody. the same circle. And, this is and, and how old is he here. when he makes this? Like, How old was Tobert to Maguire? He was born in 1975, so he'd be more like 21. Yeah, yeah. he looks, yeah. He's, looks I mean, he's very baby face. Very baby such face. a baby face. So story. this is his year because this year he's in the Ice Storm and mm-hmm. G's Instructing Harry. Mm-hmm. And then the next year he's in um, Pleasantville and Cider House Rules. Mm-hmm. No, Sally Hurst was 99. So next year he's in Fear and Loathing in Pleasantville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this movie was huge for me because it starred three of my favorite actors. It starred Tobey Maguire and Joan Allen from Pleasantville, one of my favorite ever movies that I watch over and over (laughs) again. Love. And it starred Christina Ricci from Mm -hmm. Adam's Family Values. Family (laughs) Values, especially Values. Both. I own both on VHS. Values 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 is the one that she gets the Oscar nom for in A Just World. Yes. Yeah. She's she's all time Thanksgiving scene star also between this and Yes. Yes, that's Family true. Values. She's the queen of Thanksgiving. Oh, fuck, is there a third Ricci Thanksgiving film? <laughs> is it it'd be like perfect to do a Ricci Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving triple, triple feature. I don't know, is Buffalo sixty six like set at Thanksgiving? Yeah, the Speed Racer takes place. <laughs> that's right. We've already talked about yeah, Ricci. Yeah, this is my Speed second Racer. Ricci pod. We love some Ricci. Um uh, so I was like all in and I like Kevin Klein because I loved a fish called Wanda. I don't yeah. know if I'd seen like a lot of other Kevin Klein. In and out? In yes, I that, had that seen was, it now. Yeah, that was the I saw same that in theaters. Year. Yeah, the yeah, same, yeah, year. Yeah. same year. I saw that in theaters. I saw this on the BBC, on BBC Two, uh, where I... Yeah, all right. Wait, did your family have some expensive satellite package where you got foreign channels? I don't understand how you would have gotten the BBC. <sighs> no. How much was your cable bill? BBC Two. Like, not just BBC, like... like BBC uh, Two. BBC Two. BBC we two. don't have BBC Two No, it's two called BBC America. America. It's You've gotten the wrong name of the thing. I don't know. You have to explain yourself here because we are so perplexed. Well, if I can explain, BBC Two was sort of the channel for the more alternative stuff because BBC One was like the flagship channel. Right, okay, that but in England. Yeah, but there's like for. one yeah. BBC. Right. Okay. right, but so on my ch- TV in Britain, where I lived. Whoa! <laughs> oh, damn. Ben, you're so dead right now. Ben is dead. Yeah, on BBC Two, uh, I lived in Britain. It was channel number two. I had five channels. So that's where you saw this. I saw this on the BBC. I remember either Entertainment Weekly or Time Out New York used to do a chart of movies and their appropriateness with relation to children. Yeah, That's very servicey and I, nice, and I right. don't think any outlet would be so uncool as to do this that right. these days. And they were like, here are the different like quadrants of where this movie has potential offenses. But they would include movies that were clearly 100% offensive. Mm-hmm. And I remember the ice storm being included in sexuality. They said two children show each other, go into a bathroom and show each other their genitalia. Not true. Only one of them does. Yeah. yeah. How are they described it? And I was like. That movie sounds weird. Yes. And it always stuck in my craw. Didn't remember what the movie was. Mm. I think I'd seen Sense and Sensibility when I was sick. My mom made me watch it. I saw Crashing Tiger when it came out. I didn't like it. And then I loved Hulk. Oh, so you, you got to this after, after Hulk. So after Hulk. Uh-huh. And you're like, okay, I got to check out this guy. Yeah. Right. Got to delve story. through the film. Though, yeah. And I remember I watched it at summer camp on a laptop. Okay. And Great. I was like, I am this all is- about how sad this movie is. <laughs> and this movie is all weird sexual tension. Where was your summer camp? Uh, New Milford, Connecticut. I was about to. Uh, I was, my guess was that your summer camp was either in Massachusetts Last or Connecticut. Stop. New Canaan, Connecticut. New, New Connecticut. Canaan, Connecticut. So I did not know this. So the, the most recent time I watched this for this podcast, or, um, I was watching the with. The other day. The other day. You were yes. watching it with? Well, we were watching it with a friend who. Uh, it was interesting to get his. He had not watched it before. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and he, this is again one of these things I'm just like East Coast dumb about. Apparently, that New Canaan is known for all of its mid-century architecture. Mm. Um, like these, like it's there specifically for a reason because of all these insane mm-hmm. transparent houses. Oh, also my college essay did have a reference to how everybody lives in a glass house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Send me my diploma. Pass me that giant don't bong, have please. have my diploma yeah. oh, really? from UCLA. Really? <laughs> Come on, UCLA. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my Library diploma fees. from CalArts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but so that was, that was interesting to learn this time around. That was a new fact I did not know mm-hmm. to contextualize yeah. the film. Um, but yeah, New Canaan Connecticut. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes. I was coming at this post-Hulk being like, okay, that movie is great. Everyone else hates it. <laughs> What's the weird stuff that he's bringing into the Hulk? And then uh-huh. this movie is like, oh, here's all the weird family psychodrama, which is already contextualized through the Marvel Comics prism. Yeah. Because the movie That's fucking true. opens with the Fantastic Four. Yes. Yeah. Opens with Team McGuire's 
Explaining comics for you, mansplaining comics for you. Mansplaining Fantastic Four issue 141. I I will say that, like, I was expecting, I was fully bracing myself this time around because I haven't seen this movie for at least five years. Mm -hmm. I I own it on DVD. It's one of the few movies I do own on DVD, but I just hadn't seen it for a while. Criterion for this one. I have like the old, like right. I have the, the, old, the, the, old the with the you, line. Have you experienced Fox DVD? No, the old Fox. Oh, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. I have played this movie twice. I had the Fox DVD, then went to the Criterion DVD, then went to Criterion Blu-ray. Yeah, um, I have the Blu-ray. This movie's like is like a fucking straight shot for I mean, me. This of sadness. podcast is just an excuse for me to buy Blu-rays. That's, yeah. Anyway, but carry on. Um, what was I saying? You were saying you hadn't seen it in five years oh, and you yeah, were worried. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was expecting an opening sequence that it, it, it um, features now known asshole Toby Maguire. Now uh-huh. known superhero asshole, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, explaining comics yeah. and doing a like metaphor between the movie and a comic book. I was like, this is going to be real cringy. This you is have be- on this podcast called them baby books yeah i was like i don't i i want to get past the baby book part of this right. and, but mm-hmm. it actually like works for me it's like fine i like yeah. it and uh they it, don't do it too much and it also light. yeah in 1997 you actually had to do this like right. it's, you had it's, to be uh like a, you had to set up being academic about a comic book right people right be like comic book that's yeah. for the kids right still i don't know yeah um but they just kind of hit this one metaphor which then they only revisit like At- once yeah, in like the book talk it's about the a bigger zone. metaphor, right? In the book, that he sees a, a four, a flaming four in the sky at one point. Oh, cool! Oh. Like it's like the the metaphor is very obvious that he's figuring out that his family are like the Fantastic Four. I, the final shot when and he gets off the train Franklin feels Richards. very Chill out, buddy. right. Yeah, um, when the family's together at the end of the movie, it feels very Fantastic Four to me. With Christina Ricci, of course, being the thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All this repression. No, yeah, no. Rage, and Joan right. Allen is Invisible Woman, and right. and Cle- Kevin Klein is fucking Mister Fantastic, right? And he's Human Torch. He's flying yeah. through the skies. Yeah. Um, but but uh, it's also it's you get these great like uh, fucking uh, Kirby drawings. Yeah, sure. Filmed mm-hmm. these yeah, like of, weird nihilists, right? Um, and he's he's oh. on a train coming back that is stalled. Reading his baby book, Emily, you're covering your mouth. What do you want to say? I really thought for a really long time that it was a nihilist. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That would be a good Marvel villain. I believe in nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, yeah, that's why you would do all sorts of fucked up shit. Right, exactly. You're you, a nihilist. Why are you fighting the Fantastic yeah. Four? I don't know. <laughs> I don't believe in anything. Our arch villain, Greg, I mean, just- comma, a nihilist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, but this thing that I've always yes. loved about the Fantastic Four, the idea that like your your family is like your your source of your greatest strength and your greatest weakness. It's sure. like the raw feed of like everything you come from is also what holds you back and and yeah da 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 da. But he's on this train in media res. It's stuck on the ice. The lights right. are off. He's trying to read it. It's and quite it comes an image, back too. On. It's very train. dreamy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's super dreamy, and especially not knowing the context of it in that opening. It's right. like one yeah. of the. It looks like an abandoned train that he's like hiding in almost. Yeah. 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 And it's like, yeah, it's like, how is he living here? Right. It looks it's, like he looks should cold. be frozen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, and it's, it is one of the few. This has become, I think, a very tired thing recently. In recent years, everybody has been doing the see the ending first. Hate right. in media res. I hate um, yeah. it. Yeah. Not and a fan. I like this one. Yeah. I do. Uh, and I, I was, don't mind this one at all. That was another one I was, another thing I was expecting to not work for me or feel like tired, but um, it's retroactively not the, tired. It's not the media res that's trying to like give some big hint about where the story's going. Well, it's not really in media res because. Paul's entire storyline takes right. place it's completely in separate. Rest. Like yes. in media res would be like Kevin Klein waking up on the floor of the bathroom or something. Right. Like, <laughs> where? How did I get, get here? here? Like, but that's the thing because he's so often away from That's them. where our producer Ben is, by the way. He's on yeah. the floor of the bathroom. <laughs> Until the end of the movie, it's not like it's some big twist, but you kind of just feel like this is one of the times he's going back and forth. You don't yeah. really care that much about where it is in the chronology. Yeah. Um, but then from there we go to the, these two central families. Mm-hmm. One is, yes, uh, Alan, Klein, Ricci, McGuire. Sure. And then the Carvers. Jamie Sheridan, who's Damn phenomenal right. in this fucking he movie. He is. He's excellent. He's a good actor. Sigourney Weaver, uh, Elijah Wood, and then Adam Bird. What's his last? Adam Han Bird. Adam That's Hanbird. right. Little man Tate himself. <laughs> the star of America's favorite prequel, Jumanji. Yeah. Is he the... He's, he's the monkey young. boy in Jumanji. 
He he's Robin Williams. You mean? Oh, you're right. He's not right. He's yeah. young Robin Williams. Yeah. He's not he's, the monkey boy. He's in the beginning with yes. Kirsten Kirsten Dunst, right? right? And, no, 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 no. Kirsten, oh, no, Kirsten Dunst is, is the in the child. Movie. Who's the other? It doesn't matter. Whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, who cares? I don't know. Not me. Anyway, um, those are the two families. They yeah. live close by. Yeah, they're very close, and they are intermingled. Kevin right. Klein is are having they, an affair they're, they're with... They're like next door neighbors. They're like yes. next door yeah. neighbors. Right. But even in New Canaan, that means they're like five minute walk, walk away from each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Everyone's super isolated. <clears throat> isolated. Right. Isolated. And that's a very, very clever you, metaphor. Yeah. Did you note that in your essay? Isolated. Isolation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also their emotions are cold. Sure. Um, also, it's 1973, and Nixon is on the TV all the time because mm-hmm. Watergate is bubbling over. Mm-hmm. Which, for our listeners, you have to imagine, the context is like, it's like you have a president. People everyone, have lost faith in him. People have lost people faith in really him. People are really jaded about authority. Mm-hmm. And you like feel like he's up country. to criminal activities. Yeah. You're wondering whether or not he's going to get taken down. He's sort of flailing publicly. Yeah. You're also kind of addicted to the news. Like yeah. you yeah. keep you have watching to watch it, all the time. right? Even though it's so miserable, right? It just makes you feel bad, right? It's but like it's you know I think like a lot of our younger viewers will never. No, really it's a very stand. period For context. Concept. It's like your president had a consensual affair with an adult actress right, who then right, tried to silence. All right, shut up. God knows what will have happened six months from now anyway right. we'll find out that he like you know robbed fort knox or something <laughs> what if it just comes out that that would be amazing yeah, that'd be good that'd be impressive Jesus. he'd be like i wanted the money <laughs> and people would be like i well, always wanted the there. money <laughs> Here's a, i love the defense of him robbing fort knox he needs the money <laughs> if he can get it then that's on us yeah, like, yeah. was all that money to be all these lawsuits how's he yeah. gonna pay them off he's gonna rob fort knox Here's a very serious question. Here's a very serious question, and we'll get back on subject with the movie. This very serious question. Mm, I'm sure. Yeah. How do you think the public would react if it turns out that Donald Trump drinks diarrhea? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like every morning, he's Go like, Can 35% I have one cup of diarrhea, please? And he just sips it up and goes, like, I think they'd think that was weird. How? I don't... I'm so glad you shit your pants. All right. All right. That's enough. That's enough of that. You don't think they'd think it was weird? Yeah, I guess so. I checked out for this part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Your call. On staff? No, 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 no. Yeah. Don't pursue the bit. diarrhea man. Ben, you're in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> you hit your head. Oh, I'm drunk. It's diarrhea pro, man. Um, so, how, what's, what's the, like, the real start of the movie? I'm trying to remember what the opening couple of scenes are. I mean, we have Joan Allen is at the book fair looking over this table of all these, like, new psychology books. Oh, that's not really the start of the That's where she meets Reverend Sexy Time. Yeah. Reverend Henry Zerny. Uh, Henry Cherny, Cherny however Cherny. you say his yeah. name. Um, yeah. Wait, is that the beginning? I don't. I can't That's remember the early exact on. The beginning, the beginning is, is of it is uh, is Toby, and then he's well. It starts with him. It's oh right, yeah, him right. and school. him with Katie Holmes Libbits. and Crumholtz, and Crumholtz yeah. is given a t- he's taking a bong rip with Crumholtz, right? And yeah. he's telling his close female friend, his ducky, yeah. Oh, God, I have such a crush on Libets, and, and she's, she's like, like "Don't this- tell your friend oh, about right. it." She's cool. She's yeah. got like short red hair. Yeah. She's really cool. Who's she? I don't, I don't know. She disappears from the movie. Toby, hang out yeah. with her. Yeah. Yeah. She seems cool. Per- that's why I said she's the ducky. You should realize eventually. That's yeah. what everyone wants. But uh, she's like, first of all, you're so cliched. Of course, you have a crush on Libets. That's the least interesting thing you could possibly do. This mm-hmm. is Katie Holmes's first screen role. Mm-hmm. Is she already on Dawson's Creek at this point? No, because I think that's ninety eight, right? No. No, it's 97. Okay. Okay, so Dawson's Creek has just yeah. launched. Yeah. Wow. Uh, she's, she's launching her parallel right. film career. Mm-hmm. Then, I don't know. Doesn't she play the exact same character in Wonder Boys? I can't remember. And the exact same character in Batman Begins. Uh, I'm sorry, Batman Begins. Uh, in the exact same character in The Gift. Well, not the, but like, you know, she was, no, it is 98. No, you guys had me all worked up. Yeah. Okay. Dawson's Creek is okay. 98. 98? So, yeah. No 98 way. to 2003. Jeez. Um, was it a mid-season pickup? Let's find Because I out, definitely folks. watched it yes. in seventh grade. January, January 20th, 1998. Wow. Wow. Okay. Good pull. No, so it was mid-season. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 On, um, you know, the, the WB. WB. Yeah. WWW. Um, so, and that, yeah, so this was her, literally her first performance. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so the, set up the dynamic of Krumholtz always, always finds a way to HU with the girls that Tobe Maguire L's. Hang out? Hang, what? Yeah, I was going to say hook up with oh, the hook girls up, that okay. he H- likes. Okay, fine. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 
He sure. also hears that she every year for ever. Thanksgiving. <laughs> so <laughs> be it. Uh-huh. Try to save time. Oh okay. yeah, we okay. saved so much time. Yeah. Let's make this a two-parter. Uh, he hears that her peas I'm kidding, I'm kidding. every year for TGs. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Leave their apartment. Okay. So now Tom McGuire goes, okay, I got to get invited over to that apartment. Got to get into that apartment. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> yeah. I got to get in. I'm chosen to get there. <laughs> uh, my favorite part of this whole intro part of, of him at school, which I also like, I didn't, I think I thought that he was at college for the first, I did too. The first couple of times I, I watched it. I think I did too. That's a good call. Because mm-hmm. I was like, what's boarding school? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. And he's like in a dorm yeah. and like he, yeah. he goes and talks in the payphone. And he's and all doing that. drugs. Like, who does drugs when they're in high school? Okay, man. Good <laughs> point. Unbelievable. Um, Kids these days. <laughs> ben is raising his hand. Hey, Ben. What? I'm in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Um, no, but my favorite part of this is when he gets the call from his dad and he has to use the phone out in the hallway and, uh, and they have their little exchange. He talks to, and then he talks to Christina Ricci Charles. and then Charles. Charles, Charles and Charles. And then, uh, and then he gets the phone, the phone gets handed back to his dad and he's like, I love you. And then there's just that slightest of glances over his shoulder to like yeah. two dudes. We never even yeah. see, they never even come and focus. And he's just like, okay, bye. Yeah. And, <laughs> It's like you know that character. Sad. Mm. Yeah. Toby is sad. Oh, Toby. Um, so. I like that his relationship with his sister is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. it's such a breath of fresh it air is. in the middle of the film when he comes back for Thanksgiving and they have their first scene like face to face. Right. And you're like, oh my god, two people who actually kind of like each other. Right. Because amazing. Their, their initial dynamic where he's like, don't touch my shit, and like, yeah, and, yeah. But, like immediately you realize, no, no, they're 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 cool with and each even other. Even when he realizes she has touched his shit, he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you've been touching my shit, haven't you? But like, why is he at boarding school and she's not? I, I guess that was kind of a thing. I mean, she's yeah. young. Younger, I think it's like maybe she'd be going a year from now. You yeah. Know? Yeah, maybe. All right. Mm. So he's going to come home for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. There's an ice storm happening. Mm-hmm. And Christina Ricci's uh, making eyes at Elijah Wood in the playground. I mean, what else is going on? And the, the, the Kevin Klein's having an affair with Sigourney Weaver. Right. Kevin, yeah. We're just, oh, we're oh. getting all of that. We're getting They have the-, the dinner party at the Carver's. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the kids, yeah. are, where serving. The kids are serving and uh, drinking wine in the kitchen and then watching the, the parents from the, from the like yeah. the, the weird dome yes, under yes. like, this house is incredible. Uh, yeah. And, and that's when the, the, the idea of the key party is first brought up. Because right. like, Can you believe this nonsense? Yeah. yeah. But also they're all talking about couples therapy. It's a given that all of them are in it. And it's like the only thing we've ever fought about is whether or not to continue going to couples therapy. Yeah. And Joan Allen does not find that funny. Yeah. And then there's the the moment with Joan and and Sig- Sigourney in the kitchen where she's like, "Don't touch the dishes." <laughs> oh like, yeah, it's like before you even find out about their affair, you're like, "Oh, they're having an affair." But yeah, right. But uh, Joan Allen and Sigourney Weaver represent very different. They're both types. Right. They're both seven early seventies mom types. Right. And it's they're sort of women who grew up with confines around them socially. Yeah, they're pre boomers, these right. people. They they were probably born in like the thirties, these right. guys. You in know, a culture like, where the walls are now being redefined. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Sigourney, you get a sense, feels a loss at the life she could have lived right. were she born five years later. Mm-hmm. Sure. You Ten. know? Yeah, Ten, no, for sure. What have yeah. you? That that she now is stuck a little bit into a box. She also the way she's costumed is just absolutely incredible. She's she's so amazing, a total thing. smoke show in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's like you know somewhat liberated, right? But like performatively so, and and right? also like the line that's so telling to me is when she catches Christina Ricci in uh, the bathroom and she says, "You know, a body is his temple." Mm-hmm. And that, it's that, all about, it's not that it's her son, it's the idea that the male body is more of a thing than the female body, you know? Oh, I didn't no, pick no, that No, 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 no. She's talking like about body. Ricci's body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your body is a temple. I mean, and no, then she goes off on the, like, the thing about Samoa or whatever, yes, which is just, like, one of that. the best moments. It's the worst well, sex talk incredible. I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There are two really, really bad sex talks. In oh, my God. Movie. Klein the sex Klein, talk. Yeah. Oh. The self-abuse yeah. talk. <laughs> Just, like, skip right to masturbation. Oh, it's amazing. God. I'm trying to find this. So there's a part where she uses male pronouns. Sure. Well, they, ta- they say, well, she's she's talking about how that's why, like, when, when young men are coming of age in underdeveloped countries like the Samoa, they send them out into the woods yeah. until they've learned a thing or two. <laughs> But she's definitely, because what she has walked in on is Christina Ricci exposing herself, not, mm-hmm. you yeah. know. 
Yeah. I mean, I guess the boy was sort of yelling. Yeah. Because he the his way of getting. Why out are you of doing it this? Is, to me? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, I, I, yes, that's, she's, she's got this sort of like jumbled up, like literature in her yeah, brain that right. she sort of spews, yeah. but like the, none, none of it really makes a lot of sense. They have a waterbed too. P.S. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, now Jonah Allen feels like she, she feels a little threatened by the fact that society is asking her to change. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you think about these characters and both of them, like this, this generation of parents would have, um, been like young parents and had kids and been kind of out of like a definitively out of youth culture throughout the entire 60s but just right. out of it just on the other side of it so it's like now there's some kind of feeling of having missed out on something or feeling like yeah i don't know that right. that's kind of the, the vibe yeah. yeah yeah and she uh you know she's she's looking at these books she doesn't even know what to make of these yeah. things there's this Feminist. modern Steak. right progressive pastor who's kind of given her eyes oh man um, he's got a corduroy blazer, right? And a turtleneck. Yep, the best look. But I she's also a picture like, of him to Emily Ishida. She's horror. she's shoplifting, shoplifting. She's shoplifting from too. pharmacies. There's this sense of, especially when I was like 13 and watching this, being like, "Why are these characters doing these things? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't really make any sense." And Ang Lee said his big into the movie was it's the notion of the culture shifted so much. The kids are now kind of acting like parents. The parents are now kind of acting like kids. Right. And something is sort of cosmically wrong with all yeah. of them. But in a way that's so vague and nebulous, the only way to reset it and set it right is for something horrible to happen. Yeah. And it's like everyone is kind of just off their axis yeah. to some degree. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to talk about that overall idea a little more at the end. Sure. Because okay. I, I have opinions about that. Like sure. a few of the things that don't work for me about the film. But, um, but yeah, I think that that the sense of like discord or disarray or something is like very, yeah. And yet the kids are mimicking each other. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, sorry, I'm mimicking their parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like they're like, um, Toby Maguire and Kevin Klein kind of behave in the same way in this movie. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's intentional. Like there's a yeah. weird sort of like cosmic bond. Oh, yeah. 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 Between mother and daughter and father and son. Yeah. And Rigi is kind of like playing this very complicated game of like, she at school wants to position herself as like the grand all seeing sort of like uh right. she's been around mm-hmm. yeah she right. knows she I know knows. the story yeah. about everyone else what they're doing wrong what I'm doing right mm-hmm. but then is like very sheepishly kind of roping Elijah Wood who's someone who barely like acknowledges other human beings yeah. is so obsessed with the notion of the molecules floating around him <laughs> yeah uh, Elijah man yeah <laughs> those uh, eyes so he's like a child star too. I mean, right, like yeah. this is like uh, a kid that I like. I saw Flipper in theaters. Hundred percent. He's like an above Huck the Finn. title kid. Huck Finn. Yeah. yeah. North. Um, yeah. I was really t- there was a TV Good movie son. of Oliver Twist that he was yeah. Michael Dodger in that That's I was right. really into that. With uh, Richard a Richard age. Dreyfus. Yeah. Dreyfus. Yeah. He was um, vegan. Who else is in that? I don't, I don't remember. Know. I just no remember one. Elijah Wood. But but he's yeah. a big deal at this point. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, and then, the next year is the faculty. Right. Uh, yeah. And then. Uh, Which is then bizarre he, also to think about, like, like with Ricci and opposite of sex, like mm-hmm. faculty in this being, I don't know. Right. That he grows up kind of like yeah, all of a sudden. Fast. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. And then, of course, he goes off to New Zealand. But yeah, he was what, younger. What does he do in New Zealand? Vacation or something? Yeah. yeah. He was 15 when he made this movie. Okay. Um, she uh, kind of keeps on like very structured, like, let's go hang out in this abandoned pool and kiss. Yeah. That abandoned pool's kind of cool, though. Yeah. But that's sort, Mood. Of, that's sort of very, Mood. like, rigid, like, we need to fool around with each other kind yeah. of thing. But um, I love that she sets her sights on, like, the kid who's, like, that everybody thinks is stoned. That's, like, right. so, so removed from the structure of masculinity that's yes. beginning to be formed right. at the school. So that's the only and it's explanation. Like, that's the one that I want. <laughs> the but, when it's almost like he's, like, a CPR dummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He spaces right. out. And and, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it is just sort of like he's like a boy body. Yeah. Like she can like kind of manipulate him, you yeah. know? Um, and and then his younger brother, as as Elijah Sam. Wood later says, idolizes her. Yeah. Uh, pretends also, to shoot like, his little army guy at her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Everybody's like a something in, in training. He's like a unabomber in training. Very She's much so. like. <laughs> he, he won't stop pulling a Sid on all his toys. Yeah. Yeah, he's blowing up his uh, model planes. Right. Yeah. Kind of can't reconcile his own emotions. I kind of like that scene though, because it's like such a naked cry for help, and yeah. his mother responds with like, 
What are you yeah. doing? Play with a whip instead. Yeah. You're being weird. Yeah, yeah exactly. Does this whip blow up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Sigourney Weaver's a bad mom. Yeah. yeah. She's I mean, mom. she's not into it. Like you said, like this is just not where she imagined, I yeah. think. Yeah, and Jimmy Sheridan is so physically out of the picture. There's that moment where he comes back and he's like, hey, I'm home. And they're like, you were, you were gone? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Whereas like, I feel like uh, Ben and Elaine, you know, Kevin Klein and Joan Allen, yeah. they're more like, why Why didn't this work? Like, yeah, this yeah. seems like it should have worked. Yeah, right. we're, we're, both, we're both great. Like, we're communicative. Like, we're not, you know, openly contemptful of each other. Like, yeah. They're, they're pretty solid as parents, all considering. They're not great as parents. They're not great, but they're yeah. like, they're like, at least trying to put forward the appearances of being good, which is something I guess. Yeah, yeah. they're doing, yes. the, they're having the <laughs> self abuse talk, right. even right. if they're bad at it. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's building up to, I mean, I, I guess they, it sounds Klein and Weaver have only slept together like two or three times. Is that right? I mean, there's that great, which is a, a classic. This is how you shoot unsatisfying sex is just all back, uh-huh. all male back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, there's Nothing that sex worse scene. than boy back. And then he starts like complaining about his golf, his golf. buddies. <laughs> and yeah. she's, and she's just like, like, I already have a husband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't need that. another one. It's like the coldest line reading ever. Uh, uh, she, yeah, she's mean. Yeah, because there's she's that, so and then her next that. thing is is he. She's just like, I, I gotta go put in my diaphragm. I'll see you later, and then yeah. just drives away. That's and incredible. She says, I, let me go grab some birth control. I know, I know. And then, and then yeah. she hears the car. Yeah, like, leave. yeah. And I just love him. Just like I guess I'll hang around this home for two hours. I guess I'll like wobble on the waterbed. Yeah. I mean right. it. I, I mean I. I think her character, like, this is why she's not my favorite performance in it, is that it does feel a little bit easy. Like, like woman who has been a mom and been, like, done all the suburban mom things and been a parent and whatever, and even if she's bad at it, is, like, taking out her revenge on men by just being, like, the worst to Kevin Klein. And that feels, like, kind of, I mean, it's It's just just convenient. It's just an easy line to draw. Right. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So so she said... um, Ang Lee made them all write uh, character biographies. And Kevin mm-hmm. Klein was like, I'm not in fucking acting school anymore. Why do I got to do this? <laughs> what a jerk. Right. And <laughs> she said that she went to him and very pointedly said, I think this character. Weaver? Are we talking about? Weaver. Uh-huh. Went to Ang Lee and was like, I think the key to this character is the fact that we can't really figure her out. There is no cut and dry psychology. And I don't really want to explore all of these things because I don't think she has any sort of routine. I think she's so displaced. Yeah. I think there's not logic behind her behavior. I like that in that scene at uh, when he confronts her at the key party, it doesn't feel vindictive. She's just like, I don't know. I had some errands to run. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's just so thoroughly like, look, I'm living in some weird life. That would have been different if I was born 10 years earlier or 10 years later. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to make do with what I got right now. Just let me do whatever the fuck I want. She's also just lonely. I mean, you can tell. And the really profound thing, she says, they all talk about how they feel like Ang Lee weaponizes. And maybe this is something he learned doing Pride and Prejudice (laughs) because people still talk about this today. Uh, sorry. Oh, fuck, I keep on making oh, that I mistake. Oh, would, I would never keep those two. I never read an Austin book in my yeah. life. <laughs> well, um, guess you guys ain't cultured like me. Well, no. I didn't grow up and... Well, never mind. Wait, where's, where did David grow up? Hey, David, how are you doing? I want to talk about a podcast okay. that uh, I'm a big fan of. Yeah? I think you're a big fan of it, too. Okay, Who who's the podcast? Well, it's Who Weekly. Now I'm, that you I'm say asking it. you strongly, who is the punk? Oh, wait a second. We're in we're we're in trouble here. That barely even tracks. You're right. Okay, so Who Weekly? It's a podcast about everything you need to know about the celebrities you don't. It's hosted by friends of the show, Lindsay Weber and Bobby Finger. Bobby Finger, people on Reddit were recently asking, why hasn't he come back? He's, He's coming, coming back, back soon, but if you need that finger coming fix, back, if you want to get fingered, start listening to Who Weekly. That's right. He is <laughs> he is the namesake of one of our best drops. Correct. Finger. Uh, you know, so this is it's it's. I've been obsessed with this podcast basically since it launched because it was one of those podcasts where you're like, <sighs> that was a good idea. Such a good idea. That was a good idea. Um, and you know, it's celebrities like Rita Ora or Julianne Hoff. How? Just, yeah, I think it's how Huff. I think it's Huff. Like uh, Clay Crawford or Brad Pitt's new girlfriend Nary Oxman. Yeah, they dig into all these sort of like 
quasi celebrities who you may not have heard of but seem to be like living or these like you've ridiculous heard of, lives. But you haven't seen or heard any of their work. You're like, what are they famous for? I just know I'm seeing their names a lot. Like, like Justin Bieber's marrying a Baldwin daughter, but it's right. not the Baldwin daughter I knew. Because it's like Stephen Baldwin's daughter. Like, like what? And, and everyone's saying this. Like, I'm supposed to know who she is, and I'm going who weekly. So every episode goes deep into the biggest who celebrity uh, stories of the mm-hmm. moment. They have a call in episode every week. Uh, you can call six one nine who them, and you know listener questions such as is Tessa Thompson or who are a them? Mm-hmm. I think she's them. At this I think point. she's a them. Uh, who the hell is Maria Acton and why is she in all of Kim Kardashian's Instagram? So Literally no that idea. I have listen to listen to the, to the show to have an answer. <laughs> Extremely important stuff. Uh, it airs twice weekly. New episodes on Tuesdays and Fridays, and you can check it out Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows. Who yeah, weekly? Get her a listen. Great show. The thing Ang Lee would would do that apparently he still does is weaponize his seeming lack of handle on the American yes. on, on the English language yeah. to say very like blunt things. Blunt things. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And very profound things. Yeah. I remember that that on the um I haven't seen the Criterion DVD, mm-hmm. but I I remember that being a part of the like doc on the the feature ad on the regular dvd they say he's really expressive yeah the fact that he comes from like an acting background is like he would sort of just like take on the face or the body language Mm -hmm. of like what the scene was supposed to feel like not what they were supposed to do yeah but like the scene's kind of like this you know yeah 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 or he'd look at them and just say like one word and he said there's the moment when sigourney weaver comes back from the key party and you don't see what's happened between her and the kid Mm-hmm. And she comes back in on this weird kind of mopey walk. Mm-hmm. And she walks right up to the door where Christina Ricci and the young boy are. Right. And like walks up to it and then doesn't open it and peer in. And she said to Ang Lee, I really think I would look in there. I think as a mother, I would check to see if my kids were okay. Right. And he said, no, no, no. Too ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. and she was like, "I just trusted him so fully at that point that I didn't fight back on it, even though I felt wow. so fundamentally as a mother that I wouldn't do it." And I watch it now, and it was so the right choice yeah. in a way I never would have been able to internalize. <laughs> but so God, there is ashamed. something so profound there. You look at that moment where it's like a wide shot. She walks in very slowly, yeah. After seemingly getting the best guy from the pool, yeah. right, yeah. and then just sort of almost puts her hand up to the door and just walks away. Yeah. And it's like the entire notion of dealing with anything, there's too much shame. See, I this this is the this is the thing. I I don't love her being a sh- just ashamed of like bagging the hot guy from the party. Like right. I feel like it's a little punishing of that. She's definitely yeah. The sorry. movie is, punishes her a lot. I mean, it literally kills her. See, this is interesting. Yeah. Well, yes. Well, yes, the bo- yes, it, yes. it's the book that punishes her. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, but uh yes. Um but also I don't know. I feel like he wants you to look at it in any way you want to look at it. Like, yeah. you know, he, he talks about this movie as a painting that you can like approach from different angles. And uh-huh. like he talked about how, or I've, I read something about how it was funnier, like when they shot it, like yeah. not fun, but like the, there's a funnier version of this movie that's maybe a little more heightened. Yeah. And then he heard the, the score. Right. And he was like, hmm, interesting. And like, the, then the, as it came together in the editing room, like they were like, no, 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 it's sad or sad, sad. So, you know, like, or muted, muted. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it was also like, there, apparently this movie was two and a half hours for a long time. And then it comes huh. in at like Whoa. 150. There yeah, are a lot of deleted scenes which I haven't movie. watched. Well, yeah. It's also like, in my head, it's span more time but it's just a weekend it's right. ju- it's just yeah. two days really. and, the, and yeah. the last half of the movie is just cutting between essentially three yeah. different environments yeah. in the same in the two same hour night. span right yeah. i want to say getting to this idea of the movie being able to be viewed from different angles emily seems to be eating like bird seed or something i'm not sure what she's eating <laughs> eating on mic though fuel. i am hi it's my eating on mic debut sigourney weaver's the character i come out of this movie feeling worst for I find her weirdly the most empathetic, especially her final moment where she just kind of sadly curls up on the bed with a blanket. Right. Well, with a blankie? With a blankie. Um, I, I don't think that you don't feel bad for her, but I, I just question the impetus to make you feel bad for her, I guess, is sure. what I'm saying. Interesting. Like, I don't know. I mean, you feel bad for her because why? Because she has engaged in behavior that's like made her uh, ashamed to confront her kids about <laughs> no, I, mean, I, like, I, I don't know I feel bad for her because she feels like a dramatically unfulfilled person she feels like the loneliest character in the film to me yeah and the one with the least 
sort of um, but, tangible options. But the movie does obviously end on the family and she's not there. You know, so yeah. like obviously the, there's a little more emotional fulfillment or story fulfillment at the end of the movie for the hoods. Yes. Whereas yes. her last shot is, is essentially what you're talking about. Right. Exactly. Right. I really could have done without the curling up into the fetal position shot. It's like really one of the only gripes I have with the film. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I, I, think, I think she just had a bad time with what's his pants. With, I mean, with, with her key guy. Oh, oh, because oh. it's the night of that. Yeah, she might. It might have just been a bummer of an experience because Jamie Sheridan has a bummer of an experience with uh, Joan Allen. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 only the, I, isn't that the curling up. The curling up is before Elijah Wood is brought back in. Correct. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. She's reacting to so it's the, not, the key party. Yeah, not, it's not reacting yeah, to yeah, the yeah. key party. Yeah, yeah. Which like. I don't know. If we're not going to see it, then like it, we're just, I think that we're just led to believe that like she feels bad for sleeping around or something. I guess so. I well, mean, it's probably, just, but she doesn't really feel bad for sleeping with Klein. Yeah, see, I don't think it's I don't know. I, just I, don't, think I know it's what like, Emily's saying yeah, though because hear, it's, it's mysterious mm-hmm, in a way yeah. that other things in this movie are less mysterious. Yes. Like, I don't think she's coming, like, it's like, I mean, it's like, I feel like the movie is showing us that she's kind of making herself miserable in a way, sure. like with all yeah, the things yeah, that are yeah. supposed to like mm. be liberating her, which is like, a, you can be said for a lot of the characters in the film, but I think for all her, of them, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But for her, I feel like she's the, she's the most extreme end of this spectrum of like liberation and misery together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, right. I, well, so I think the key party is that, yes. right. It's like the key party is this like. Hey, we figured it out. We've unlocked the mystery. Like, no, this yeah. is what we'll do. And they we're all going to feel right. like, yeah, yeah, right. They unlock yeah. the gates. Yeah. Um, and no one has a good time at the key party. No. One of my, f- I, I know we're doing this movie completely out of order, mm-hmm. but one of it, m- two days. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. One of my favorite moments in this movie is when they actually do sit down to pick the keys and Al- with our host, Allison Janney. Allison Janney. Uh, award winner. Also, there is a, this time around, I noticed that there is a, a painting, a portrait of Allison Janney hanging Ooh. over the fireplace. And I was like, that's a, tr- that's a prop to get wow. the, the 70s style portrait of Allison Janney from Ice Storm would be incredible. Um, but when they sit down and it's really clear immediately that nobody knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, we've all read about this in like Reader's Digest or whatever, but like we've <laughs> probably right. not Reader's Digest, but still like, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but you know, like, uh, what do we actually do? Or like now we're actually in the thing. Like the it's real. Where they try to decide the order and they yeah, keep and on making like, jokes, yeah. but then not actually coming up with anything. Oh, uh, golf can, handicap. It's <laughs> almost, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost like us trying to start this podcast, like <laughs> right, right. Which we're still, I think, thirty minutes away from starting the episode. <laughs> Funny. This is a good warm up. This is a good warm up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you this feel? Is a good warm up. Um, no, I. You're right. They. This isn't like. It's not like Allison Janney runs a weekly key party. No, I no. love her. She's perfect casting because she's so good at the like maniacal grin yeah, of like. like it's all know, it's nice. uh, put it in yeah. the bowl. Like yes. this time, she <laughs> yeah, says right. something like like new this week or something. Yes, like, right. yeah. <laughs> totally voluntary. Totally voluntary. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's like it's like a I don't know a roast pig or something like that. Like, Are they all gonna mm. fuck in the cars? Like is I think it that sort of the thing? Yeah. Wouldn't you cancel this party for weather? Also, a hundred percent. Good point. Like a car based party. A car based. During an ice storm where everyone lives 15 million miles yeah. away from each other in the same town. Is that the idea of a key party is that it has to be car keys? Because no. I thought oh, it was. Yeah. Yes, it, it has to be car keys. Car keys. It has to be car but keys. But you don't have to have sex in the car. You could. As far sure, as I know. Right? You could go, like, Presumably. go off somewhere. Right. But the idea is you got kids. You want to bring them back to the home. That feels a little wonky. Wasn't there like uh, a yes. CBS? Uh, Swinger. Swingtown. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. It wasn't called key party. No. It was called Swingtown. It wasn't that good, but it was sort of like a third of the way to being interesting, you know what I mean? And then obviously right. CBS had just watered it down so hard. It was hard. like 2009, like, what if yeah. we try to do Mad Men? Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're still CBS? Okay, cool. Yeah, right, 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 right. Which is Pan Am, the Christina Ricci show, is another <sighs> version of right. the same Was idea. that the last thing that she did? No, uh, see the beginning of everything, which is oh, also right, Zelda right, Fitzgerald. Right, 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 right. The end of the Amazon. that series. Yeah. yeah. Amazon. I mean, great comedy. What a great title for a show that's so memorable. Z colon the beginning of everything. Apart from that, I mean, I am looking at her and yeah, she's really struggled post um, Speed Racer. I feel so, like being in a movie that anyone would even see. I do. So. I really somebody needs to revive her. She's so great. I also She's so important. I I don't say this. She is important. I wonder what the deal is with her. Yeah. I, I don't say this to be knowingly vague. She feels to me like someone who, like, the 
psychological strains of being oh, a child star caught up with her I mean, later. she's, she's yeah. given interviews to that effect, right. especially with regard to like her body image and everything, All and that eating stuff. disorders and everything. Like that's yeah. definitely out there on the record. I just like wish... Right. I just she'd wish she'd have like a, a second new, win. Right. Like, take, a new like, take as long of a break as she yeah. wants, but like yeah. I really want more. She's I mean, so she good. makes like, movies. I mean, she was in the Hero of Color City, Sit, Color City, which we've talked about in this yes, show before. Yes, she we played have. Yellow. Right. Um, but uh, and I she can't did. Owen the, Wilson didn't play Yellow in the Hero of Color wow. City. Wow. Butterscotch uh, Stallion. Remember, yeah. she was Butter in um, a Lizzie Borden like TV show on Lifetime. It was like a movie that got spun off into like a series, but that didn't take. And then, right, the Zelda the Zelda show didn't take. It was the beginning of everything. Yeah, I mean, I guess we should have known when David Hofflin was cast as F. Scott Fitzgerald that that, that might not be a, a hit. <laughs> David Hofflin. She did two different, she did a Lizzie Borden movie. That, and it was the, a spinoff. Geez. It was like. Yeah. Oh, and she was the voice of Vexy in the Smurfs, too. You forgot about that. Sure. So. Um, uh, the, so that was, the, that's the key party. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I guess it, so. It's basically like the first. <laughs> oh, day, and you were going to explain to us how a key party works, David. Oh, you, do you were looking to, at the group sex wiki. Oh, I can go back to the group sex wiki. There's also a rainbow party, which is a baseless urban legend in which. Are you going to describe much? this? Do you know what it is? In because which, I know what it is. Uh, I want you to describe this. I online. think I actually have heard of this as like a joke urban legendy thing. Like females. I'm quoting Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, wearing direct quote. wearing various shades of lipstick take turns, filleting males oh. in sequence, leaving right. multiple colors on their penises, ignoring the obvious way. fact that you would just have like a sort of just be dark a sludge. purple yeah, it's much. <laughs> sort of like <laughs> be a fellatio sludge. We're talking um, about a fellatio. They expression. were covered like on a fellatio sludge, a classic uh, fellatio sludge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's also the classic bunga bunga orgy in which participants have sex underwater, such as in a hot tub. Uh, classic bunga bunga. Um. Oh wait, no, that was a. You're not gonna read something? <laughs> well, it's just like a, a daisy chain, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and, but then just like bukaki, like is like a, a subsection of this. It's not really a group sex thing. It's just sort of like a. It's a porn trope. Sex, right? Phrase. Anyway. Uh, best enjoy. A large number. All right. I don't oh, know what you're. Boy. I don't know what well, you're murmuring. I so I I feel like there's a whole because of the way that the sex part or the key party rather is um uh, staged. It's like it's kind of adding to this idea that isn't this isn't necessarily just a film about like this craze that swept suburbia like swept wealthy suburbia and nobody knew what to make of it. It's right. also just about the basic thing of like a thing you've read about that you think everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you internalize it and immediately feel like you're weird for not doing it when in fact nobody's doing it, which like could be any number of things. Because the beginning of the movie when they're talking about it, it's like, that's like a West Coast thing, right? It's a weird West Coast thing. And then they get to this scene and Klein and Alan are both like, "Uh, uh, yeah, go check our car. I think we left our keys in there. Right. But Alan has just put together the affair because well she really puts it together once he tumbles over and hits his head on the but yeah she's she knows he's yeah. having an affair she just doesn't know with who right yeah but also she, oh she well, knows no, she knows, she knows. We're in she the knows. Basement. She, she, she was in the she basement was, you're yeah, right you're right well whatever i mean it just feels her final choice is made when he makes the fuss over sigourney weaver getting the hot guy no 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 i think she her because her choice to go to the party is after she knows he admits that that they were having an affair in so many words like his apology is something like or he doesn't even actually admit it all he says is i don't feel good about it like i I remember that line (laughs) and it's not it's not exactly what you think it is yeah it says something like that yeah but she just kind of keeps on doubling down like there's now for her to not go to the party and then she doubles down there's an out for her to not get involved with the yeah. key party. She doubles down. Right. And you get the sense that on any other night, if they walked in, even with all the problems that they would right. have been having they as would a just couple, they would just it and leave, l- right. laugh and leave. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and But this is like the one night where it has an end into their relationship. And it's like the ice storm is like a metaphor. Almost like it's a metaphor. Oh, my God. Molecules. Molecules. <laughs> Molecules. Molecules. <laughs> wow. There's, um, there's the moment I love. I mean, there are the two things I love at the key party. The red herring of the guy from the office. Who Kevin Klein is like a hundred percent sure God. Yeah. is gonna sleep with his wife. Yeah. Right. He's shown up solo. Oh yeah, no, that might be Henry Zerny. Actually. I think that's Henry that's Zerny. Henry Zerny. Yeah, a yeah. weirdly high billed Henry Zerny, which sure. feels like a red herring billing. Right. Okay. They want you to think that right. he I think they just build the kids low because they're yeah. kids. Because yeah. the guy who plays the the yeah, father you're right, is you're like right. Clumpsy or yeah, something. Michael Clumpsty. Clumpsty. 
come see. Um, but uh, I like that red herring. Sure. Klein is just side eyeing him and then has that like chuckle when he pulls someone else right. in mm-hmm. the key party bowl. But then also the father coming and like John Allen's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, sometimes a, a father has to tend to his flock if you catch. Oh, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's oh, like, yeah. I'm going to choose to believe. Or she's like, no, she's yeah. like, I'm going to I'm going to choose not to understand what you mean. Right. And then he <laughs> just looks really sad. He walks out. And the final indignity is like as he pulls his own keys out of the bowl, the other guys are like, oh, hope he didn't pull my keys. And that's yeah. just it. It's just here's this sad man. Yeah. Going to drive home alone in yeah. an ice storm. Yeah. No, everybody is so sad. Also, the coworker does not just pick any other keys. He picks. The fat lady's key. Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. my. Well, and all, that's, all that's the boys real. are like, you know, mm, sort of eh, side-eyeing eh, each other. Like, eh. wait a second. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real, everybody's on their worst behavior. Yes. Um, also, he's the one who's like, because the woman comes in with her son and he's like, I wish some of the guys would have brought their daughter. Yeah. And then yeah. Kevin Klein looks like he wants yeah. to like yeah. vomit yeah. on yeah. cue. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's real, it's real sad and gross. Yeah. Yeah, Klein is slightly elevated in this scenario, actually. Like, just very slightly. He's you can see the sort of panic, like, rising yeah. in him a little bit. Yeah. Then he just gets wasted and hits his head on the side of a table. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, Richie has gone over. You assume they sort of misdirect you to think that she's gone over to see Elijah Wood. Well, I think she is. We've already had... Right. So she makes out with Elijah Wood in a swimming pool. They have their phone conversation. And then they go... They're watching TV. And when right. she goes to the bathroom, she has the... I should, I'll show you mine if you show yeah, me yours. Right. A scene with the younger son. Elijah Woods, I'm never, it was like, I'm never going to talk to you again. Right, yeah, yeah he bikes up to her. Yeah. 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 And he bikes, bikes away. And then really. immediately on Thanksgiving, they hang out again, and that's when Kevin Klein discovers them in the basement. Right, and so she puts mask. on the Nixon mask and lets him yeah. sort of dry hump her, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and then there's like the great line. So they said in the script, <laughs> uh-huh. it was supposed to be that Kevin Klein carried her the same way he would carry Elijah Wood at the end of the film. Mm. Oh, okay. And we wanted like a very literal sort of mirroring of that image. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And Kevin Klein. trying to get into your slacks. Yes. Mm-hmm. Kevin Klein had thrown his back out like the day before. Sure. And he was like, is there another way we can do it? So they came up with the thing where. Uh, it's like a forward piggyback. Right. Which is such a beautiful moment because it's like. It's very like babyish. And he's yeah. trying to explain to her, like, I, I don't really, I'm not angry at you i just need you to know that i don't these like are the look serious of this kid things. right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah like i'm not judging you but we can't be flipping about these things and then she sort of just crumbles yeah. into being a small child yeah. that he like holds in his no, arms that, that that moment is really 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 great and yeah I, I think um yeah i mean it's so funny to me that I've, all the parents are like that mikey kid he's bad news but he's just like so this sweet he's, he's a sweet adorable, boy he's sweet, just weird weirdo. so they're freaked out by he's him a i think weirdo they think with perfect he's bone on drugs yeah. yeah everybody thinks he's on drugs right. but he's just like a little you know he's like he's probably a little all spectrum yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah and he's totally like it, it, when it, like Junior high age, Emily, this was like my archetype of like the dreamiest boy. Like this would have been completely okay. out to lunch. Also, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about how like th- these characters are like just the younger versions of, of, of Thor Birch and Wes Bentley and American <laughs> American oh, Beauty. Yeah. Thor Birch and Christina Ricci were very much in the same like yeah. uh, Venn diagram. Well, Christina Ricci was supposed to do Ghost World. Yes. And that sort of yeah. feels like a moment that like, yeah, there's an alternate timeline. But then what's the timeline? Because it didn't really pan That's out for Thor Birch either. No. Right. Like, the, Thor Birch, there's a very identifiable problem in yes. her career. Yes. Right. Yes. Her parents? Her, yeah, her, her dad, dad right. specifically. Yes. But, um, but still, it's like that type of girl, there are just like these unhappy accidents slash maybe it was just never meant to really carry you through into the mm-hmm. odds that strongly. Like this kind of sardonic, right. not traditionally beautiful or cute girl who's like, you know, usually the smartest child if not person in the room and uh you know it just has like a dark sensibility I mean, there is the, something the movie that broke ricci was prozac nation weirdly right mm, that was like right. a movie where everyone was like well that's gonna come out and that's gonna be a big deal because that book was a big deal and she yeah. was surely producing that. it it yeah. was on the yeah. shelf for years yeah. she and was Susan fighting with was, yeah. and then, and then, and then yeah, yeah right there is something kind of weird to actually viewing ghost roll as a handshake movie where it's like okay this is the year 2001 mm-hmm that sort of archetype of the teen girl is going out the window and is being replaced by Scarlett, by Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. See you later in the rear view. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know? yeah, that's, that's a good that's point. Very fateful moment. Yeah. 
Uh, I and mean, she becomes we, the thing that both? everyone copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's too bad. I yeah. But like, Johansson does become kind of the type for the new teen ingenue in the two thousands. Yeah. Like, who's Christina Ricci now? There is no Christina Ricci. Well, like now, it's right? like Haley Steinfeld, the closest we're getting. Like, what, what no. are we talking about here? No, I, I think the no, I don't think there is one. There isn't. Yeah, there isn't somebody that that. I mean, acerbic. they're probably on TV. If if there is a person, right? I is guess. it like Jane Levy? Jane Levy, but like, yeah. Uh, no, but, nah, I mean, she's, she's just, cool, but I mean, you know, she she is, but she's just. I think she's too much. Like, there is a certain part where it's like, if you are just like a cute girl, though, yeah. like if you can be written off by any idiot director at any point in your career as just a cute girl, then it doesn't work, and that's actually right. why it's hard for, I don't know, somebody who's less. I don't know. It's it's there. It's, it's it's like the. The true alternative girl. The mm. idea of having a sort of like avatar on screen for weird 15-year-olds. What about Aubrey Plaza? Oh, boy. You're probably right. Opening and up a can of worms. Well, I, also, she's probably, like... I, I mean, she, she more yeah. hit once she was in her 20s. Like, she As never a had a teen. Yeah. Right? But she, but she sort sucks. of... Yeah, and she kind of <laughs> is... No, she's, she's Christina Ricci stripped of dimensions. It's like a greatly reduced sort of what one dimension. Tumblr Christina Ricci. She's like a Tumblr yeah, Christina. It's right. a Tumblr of Christina Ricci. Yeah. Is. God, this is making me miss Christina Ricci. Well, you can always watch The Ice Storm or yeah. Angley's 1997 masterpiece. See the beginning of everything. <laughs> um, I, I mean, let's talk about sort of the culmination of all of this, I guess. The worst right. sex scene of all time between Jamie Sheridan and Joan Allen oh in the God. car. Right. So, right. In the second night is. Th- I guess it's or Thanksgiving night. Yeah. No, it's, no, it's, it's the, no, it's Friday. It's night. the Friday after Thanksgiving because yeah. we see because their, their Paul little goes Thanksgiving back to right. New York, right. right? On the day after Thanksgiving, but is going to come back for the rest of the weekend. Right, he's right. just this, going to go up for the night to like have his date with Libets. And yes. who's there? Of course, he he got crumbed. He got crumb. He got holtzed. He got uh, he got holtz. I mean, I want to point out his own petard. I want to point out that Crumholtz's character is called Francis Davenport, no, which is like the worst match for a Crumholtz ever. Not. I also love like oh he's so obnoxious in this movie but he I is. love how he's like when he the way he gets he gets Toby to go get beer for them is like mead mead yeah. we must have more it's like fuck you <laughs> fucking nerd <laughs> the worst and yet somehow he but gets every girl he's, it's he's so amazing that's like, the thing exactly. he's a confident nerd and I feel like that is like one of these things that only works like, I imagine only works in boarding school when like you literally can't escape. You're like, I and, guess this guy has confidence. And like, also, right, this notion of this guy acts like he's really smart. I guess I have to impress him. Right, like, there's yeah. this weird sort of gaslighting. And I can remember, it's high school. Right. Like, these are teenagers. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but Tom McGuire finds her parents' Yeah, Tom McGuire essentially roofies Crumholtz to get him out of the way. It's yeah. a real flim it's flam, amazing. though. But it then is, has yeah. to is like forced into roofing. Exactly. Where they're limits. all like, hey, yeah. Yeah. medication, <sighs> pharmaceuticals. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so this whole, it's sort of funny because for the being the person who opens and closes the film, Toby Maguire is not actually in this movie. Right. That he's absent no, he's not. And he's absent the for the most key part, so to speak, of yeah. this movie. Uh, and it almost feels like it, it. It feels like this sort of science experiment, and he's like the control in it. Like right, he's yes, the right, person right. He, who gets like taken out of this like pit. Yeah, hot he's, all, boiling he's the water. Observe, he's yeah. the onlooker or in a way not too. Boiling water is the yeah. I don't know. My, my metaphors are all messed chemistry. up right now. Yes, chemistry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out of the petri yes. dish. It's not a lot oh, of the film, but it does. Like this section hits me super hard because a lot of high school who Griffin was being the one sober party person at a party where everyone else is like <laughs> it wasn't fun. often like so three wasted. people and two people are asleep <laughs> right yeah. that's like a this weird. is an extreme version of it but a lot of it was like i want to go to this party and talk to that girl i'm in love with who i sit next to in science class and then everyone was just stoned out of their gourd and i was like sitting there drinking a sprite manhattan kid baby yeah and all those kids are on drugs from their age of 12 mm-hmm. i know and i was terrified of everything right see yeah i was i was getting high on Criterion DVDs. Whatever. Reading baby books. Uh, I was doing both. Hell <laughs> yeah! Give me those Criterions and those lewds. <laughs> um, uh, you are free basin commentary tracks. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, the I'm other thing this. is that, like, Go ahead. I feel like everybody. Well, okay. So, so I guess Mikey, in a way, in his like sliding down the ice like going into winter way uh mm-hmm. and paul toby's character yeah. 
I mean, they both kind of opt out in their ways yes. from like the the turmoil that right. everybody else is kind of swept up in during the storm. And one of them dies and one of them doesn't. Right. Uh, and I feel like, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, this is the part that ends up sounding like Annihilation when I wrote about it yes. to get into college Do because it. it is like this total, um, like either being attracted to or like, if you think about, if you think about the ice storm being the shimmer, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. We're doing this. Then it's like you're either you're either you can't be at the border of it. You either go in or you go out. And and I feel like Mikey Elijah Wood's character is the one who like goes in and it's just like I'm gonna go just like trip out on geometry and molecules and stuff. And it kind of feels like he's <laughs> and, a sacrifice. Yeah, he is a sacrifice right. for sure. Um, he's a sacrifice for his family, for the community, for everything. Um, and 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 Paul is yeah again like a. He's like a control, not to make a reference to the second book yeah. in that series, but he's he's outside of he's outside of this thing that just sort of twists and warps everything, and like everybody else is sort of on the periphery, where you actually like have the least clarity at all. It's like you either go all the way into the lighthouse or you like yeah. The boarding and, school gives him the perspective that the others lack. He's outside of this bubble, the yeah. shimmer. Yeah. Um, also, as he goes through it, his train is like stopped and shut down. It's like yeah. it's crossing some sort of border, yeah. right? And you know, and then it reactivates. And it's like connect to yeah. going into the negative zone. Well, it feels yeah. like he's right. like time yeah. travels in that because the, right. the way the guy is yeah. talking, it's like going back in time to go back home or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's also very fantastic for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the friend that we were watching it with, who had never seen it before, thought that the train stopped because of Elijah Wood specifically. Oh, because there's like a power because interruption. A power. I always thought that was the case. Interesting. I never I put never that really, together, yeah. but yeah. I guess that makes a be. sort of sense. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it really changes anything that no. much, but it's sort of interesting. I mean, it I is. think I, I rather I think the the same uh, the downed power line that kills Elijah Wood is also the same thing that stops the train. Not that Elijah Wood's okay. death is yeah, responsible right. for the train stopping. No, but it's I get you. Like There's right. one sort of, right. Poor Elijah sits on a goddamn... I've always been, ever since I was scared of those the guardrails, yeah. those metal guardrails. Those things will kill you. So, seriously. Uh, sits on it, just and, gets and zapped and dies. And he sees it's going to happen. He doesn't he do does. it. He does. Yeah, and he's just got this total look of wonder over his face, much like Natalie Portman at the end of Annihilation. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I, I also feel this very strong because I, especially once we moved to Iowa, and snow was like kind of a rarity for me i would always be like it's snowing or like the world is uninhabitable right now i want to go out as far as i can into it and like see how long i can make it until i have to come back and i totally like see the like like i feel like now watching i'm like i would stay in and i would watch netflix but uh (laughs) but but i totally remember a time when i would be like yes i'm gonna put on every single piece of clothing i own and like run out into it uh, I, yeah. I love this movie. I hadn't seen it probably in at least five years, if not more. But I've been like uh, spending a lot of time recently working on uh, a script that is mostly like a Snow Woods movie. And I kept on like trying to like find ways to get down on paper the sort of like feeling I had. And I realized a lot of it came from, yeah. if, if not like specifically this movie, the way this movie is able to sort of evoke that feeling of being in a, a somewhat secluded area mm-hmm. that is both kind of like idyllic and creepy when it's yeah. that cold the feeling of like i feel like even just we talked about the sound design when it comes to like the ice and the steps and all that sort of stuff but even just their breaths mm-hmm. you know the clothing they're wearing at all times mm-hmm. even when they're indoors the amount of sweaters they have on and stuff this movie just feels like how that type of temperature yeah. takes its toll on your uh like, psychology yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, and the and another really pointed thing about this being set where it is, and I guess in New Canaan when where this is like how the houses are, they're all in these. uh, They're like spread out. Like it's not a neighborhood. It's all these modern houses that were built in the forties. And and so it's almost yeah. yeah, you're like in this kind of you're not in a neighborhood. It's not like a suburban block. Like I feel like this movie would have felt a lot more on the nose if it did take place on what we would recognize. Oh, like, as being a, like a cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. a cul-de-sac or something. But it's like, it's like you're almost in outer space because right. there's all this like blank space and forest in between all these houses. They're all kind of like spread out. I mean, there's no sense of connection. No, and yeah. it's a, so this yeah. movie is about like how it's easy to draw connections between events, celestial and personal, like that might not exist. And you might be just sort of, yeah, I, I'm going to uh, describe imagining. this very poorly, 
Great. Um, but there's, I, I think it's when Kevin Klein's giving the world's worst birds and the bees talk. Mm-hmm. And they're driving and is through the windows. Is his birds and the bees talk just, it's fine to jerk off? Is that the whole talk? No, he I starts was to, to talk about, it. like, you might be having feelings and he right. can't really get to it. And then he skips straight to, right. like, well, on the topic of self-abuse. Don't do the shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that that's the talk, right? He's right. like, yeah. just don't jerk off in the shower because we expect it, you to. And, and also it it's wastes a waste water. of water and, and electricity. And, water. and he's like, I mean, also, fine. stay away from linens. Yeah. It's incredible. It's great. It's great. And then, yeah, and then it ends with him asking him to forget that they ever have a right. conversation. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And Toby's just like, Dad, I don't need to. <laughs> Toby's so squeaky in this movie. Yeah. But when they're driving in the background, it's sort of like they're on one of these, like, long, endless roads where there's just nothing. It's like copy-pasting of the same line of trees over sure. and over again. Right, right, right. And then the other thing is that kind of low rock wall. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Oh, you mean, like— Like, on the sides of the oh, road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like then there's, like, a raised kind of, like, slope up into— Right, yeah. but, like, sort of a very carefully placed low rock wall of about, like, six to eight inches. And my parents, uh, my, my paternal grandparents lived in White Plains, New York, and we'd go up there a lot. And that's always what I, like, think about, especially if we went up there for the weekend, which I would hate because I'd want to be in New York on the weekends. And we'd be driving back, like, Sunday night. I'd be bummed out knowing that as soon as we got home, I'd have to do homework. Like, I was super depressed, and it's January, Mm -hmm. and you're driving past those, like, lines of identical trees and those rock walls, and it just feels like everything's so far apart. Yeah. Like, you're not seeing any life. Yeah, you don't see people walking around. Or yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no sense of a town or a community or no. connection. None of that. Merchandise spotlight. <laughs> What's the merchandise spotlight? I mean, this had a big PS1 game. You don't remember? <laughs> there's no spotlight. Will you reach some sort of profound emotional yeah. like realization that causes you to cry in your yeah. car in front of your family? What if there was like an ice storm puzzle quest where you just had to match up the blocks of ice? There was some cell phone game that was weirdly huge. What if there was an ice storm mystery dinner? Oh, yeah. that sounds good. Wait, that just sounds like a key party. Sounds, yeah. that's, that's the trick. That's right, the trick. right. It's uh, a mystery dinner. Who, who are will you, you fuck? <laughs> it's going to be unfulfilling. <laughs> Watching this movie. Jamie Sheridan literally is like, that was terrible. That, and no, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, the moment that kills me in his performance is when, when he sees Elijah Wood, he's kind of just stunned silent. And then when he, you're like, why isn't he crying yet? And he's clearly taking the time to process it. When he reaches down to grab him, the physical strain of lifting him up turns into crying. Yeah. He's got this one seamless moment where it's like his face turns red as he's trying to summon the courage. And then he just loses it. Yeah. Um, He is the only person in that scene who doesn't, I think, also. This this is my other gripe with the film. And I Mm -hmm. guess with the direction, that doesn't work for me. It's one of, the, but it's like totally in keeping with the era. Everybody underplaying a child's death. There are so yeah. many movies where a child dies and everybody's just like, oh, gazing. Yeah, and I it's agree like, with that. And yes. it's like, no, you'd be losing your shit right yeah. now. This the, would be the most horrific thing you've ever seen. Like, I, I, I never buy that. I, in a I movie. agree with that. Obviously, the movie is entering a sort of like hyper real realm at that point. But yes, uh, I think my problem with this movie as a kid was it ended so insanely like because you don't see that coming Mm-mm. obviously yeah uh that it freaked me out too much enough that this movie was like too dark like too miserable or mm-hmm. something like you know uh i was wrong i saw it this time <laughs> and i was like I, if a movie unsettles me this much that means that it's doing something right because it unsettles me still to watch this movie yeah i want to read this angley quote to you guys okay it's from the preface of his screenplay When I think of the ice storm, I think first of water and rain, how it falls everywhere, seeps into everything, forms underground rivers, and helps shape a landscape, and how it forms a reflective surface like glass in which the world reappears. Then, as the temperature drops, what was water freezes. Its structure can push iron away. It's so strong. Its pattern overthrows everything. I love that. That. I thought that matches so your annihilation stuff. Much. Yeah. Yes, He's a cool guy. I love him. He is great. Uh, that's why this movie is good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who I, the fuck else is going to think about like the actual Earth on which the characters are walking as being a character in that way? I think like, yes. Most directors would not have approached the book yeah, this way. Yeah, yes. no, it's incredible. Like, they would have seen a yeah a comedy of like seventies moors yeah. gone wrong. But this like, is like a, a story of elements, like a yes. literal story of elements, and that's. Incredible. I love that. Kevin Klein also said that, like, whenever uh, he walked by set, Angley would just be sitting there, like, 
staring at things, thinking about things. That he was, like, never doing anything else other than, like, looking around the set as it was being, like, prepped and lit and mm-hmm. trying to find things that, like, spoke to him, mm-hmm. you know? And it doesn't feel like it's a movie that's very, like, it's it's reserved. There's even, like, when he does the hard, like, camera move down to the bowl with the keys in it, it's, like, jarring because he's been so restrained yeah, cinematically yeah. up until that point. That a very memorable move. But it's just a movie that's got, like, such a kind of fucking mise-en-scene to it. But just this sort of, like, observation, the level of detail in sort of the emotional tapestry of it feels very attuned. Yes. I yes. think it's very interesting that Ang Lee made two movies in a row about America at a crisis point mm-hmm. uh, that are both about outsiders looking in on, like, something that they think they understand and then they don't. Like, mm-hmm. this and Ride with the Devil that both star Tobey Maguire. Yep. <laughs> I think it's very a very funny little mini phase in his career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll talk about Ride with the Devil next week. Anyway. Yeah, this movie does make me wish that he had gotten the chance to make a sad Fantastic Four movie. Sure, why not? Man. Yeah. Um, That's what bums me out about the eventual oh, fucking MCU Fantastic Four we're going to get is they're just going to make it part of the whole fucking thing. And I think the Fantastic Four kind of needs space to be totally isolated you know, so that we, it could be about the family. We did a whole we've Fantastic Four never talked episode. about the Fantastic Four on this podcast before. <laughs> Uh, I will say Franklin Richards as a kid was a character that really fascinated me where like the parents had this child yeah. that's so powerful because their kid uh, in the comics is like has powers better than them that they don't understand how to deal with him. Yeah. And it is such a perfect like 70s comic book uh, metaphor for what's going on where they're like right. he he's he can like astrally project yeah like he can reshape reality what yeah. do we do and then they put like dampeners in his brain so he can't use his powers yeah. and it is. There's just a lot of great metaphors. That's your you second movie, and then your third movie is Galactus. And then in the 90s, when everything goes wild, Franklin Richards creates a whole universe in a ball. Valeria. Yep. Nerds. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the box office Kobo. game. Let's talk box about it, guys. Okay. Let's talk about September 26, 1997. Okay. I'm missing my screening. Um, no, you're, you're going to be fine. What, when, when is it? Six? Six. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. What is it's it? Okay. Of? You were never really here. Oh. I'm just saying that to you. No. Uh, and you were never really <laughs> RSVP. Well, right? you know what? We're basically done. I mean, I think you you'll, you could be five minutes late. Um, I've already seen it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Number one at the box office was an action movie starring like a TV star. It was like his first play for action movie stardom. Hmm. The Peacemaker? The Peacemaker. Starring George Clooney and um, Nicole Kidman. Yes. I don't even yes. remember. It's directed Mimi by Leder Mimi Leader. Oh, it was first the first DreamWorks. DreamWorks movie. That's why it's notable. Oh, yeah. $12 million opening weekend. It makes 41 It was a kind of a bomb. Yeah. Because everyone was like, here we go. New movie star, new studio, Clooney. new big director. It's the same year as Batman and Robin. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's that. Number two is a movie starring one of the stars of The Ice Storm. I saw it in theaters with my mom. Is it in and out? Yes. With Kevin Klein. This is his last good year. Yeah. He doesn't make any good movies after this. Um I mean unless you kind of like the lovely. Well, that film is the lovely. <laughs> it's the <duh>, okay. <laughs> He was in the star-studded Midsummer Night's Dream. He was with Callista Flockhart, That's which bottom. I saw in theaters because uh-huh. I loved Callista Flockhart. <laughs> See, I owned it because I was in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Sure. So I was I, also I in a Midsummer Night's yeah. Dream. In the eighth grade, I was Puck. See, I never got to do Who it. I don't want to talk about that. What? It's a fucking fairy. <laughs> oh, boy. Our drama teacher hated us and my summer Shakespeare program. I, I can't explain it. I got I got continually shafted. I had won a high school monologue competition with a Helena monologue that year. What? I was known in the state of Iowa as best Helena and did not get cast as Helena in our local community theater. Wow, that this, feels like an ex. This is like fucking like my fair lady Julie Andrews <laughs> shit. <laughs> I want to dig into this. <laughs> Okay. I still hold a grudge. So we'll do a bonus episode. <laughs> I never got to do Midsummer's. That that was like the one Shakespeare I always really liked. So my mom was like, you like this one, right? Yeah, because it's fantasy. And it's fun. My it's favorite funny. thing about a Midsummer Night's Dream is that it's the only Shakespeare play not based on anything. Yeah. So Shakespeare right. finally sat down. He's like, like, let that. me do an original story. So, like. <laughs> so, so there's a... <laughs> There's some actors. <laughs> There's a fairy kingdom, as we all know. Yeah. And uh, all right, uh, my I just... school was so pretentious. The only Shakespeare I got to do was Twelfth Night. Oh, we, did, it, we did Twelfth Night, but it was Twelfth restaged fun. in a Depression era circus. Oh my God. Sure, <laughs> circus. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, number uh, through Spears in my school. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you were you're not talking Curtis. about theater. You're just talking about like after school activities. Right? No, that was school. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was class. that was the cafeteria. <laughs> school was here is your spear. You handed it. Yeah, just shake the spear. Here's your first. Club. You had to get no. You had to get the spear out yes. of a trash fire <laughs> first from yeah, the cornucopia. Yeah. <laughs> the trash cornucopia. All right, number three is a Thanksgiving movie, which is uh, oh no no it's not a Thanksgiving movie. What is a Christmas film? No, it's a food movie. I I, I it's um a food movie, but it's not about the Thanksgiving. Well, it's very interesting. I want to triple check this, but I'm almost certain that it is a remake of an Ang Lee movie. Well, it's not Tortilla Soup. So it's not a re- that that's the one I'm thinking of. Tortilla Soup's the one that's the remake of yes. the Drink Man Woman. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's just an ensemble film about uh cooking. It's an ensemble. And like family drama. It's an ensemble film about cooking and family drama. Yeah. Uh, I think we talked about it on the Eat Drink Man Woman episode. Because we were talking about our favorite confused. food movies. There's a lot in that era. Exactly. Because there's What's Cooking, the Gurnda Chata movie, and there's Tortilla Soup. It's but not then big there's night. also this one. No. Uh, it's not Big no, Night. No, it's a restaurant. Great, movie. Movie. Great right. movie. Great movie. Uh, does it have a big star in it? It has an Oscar nominee, I think. No, it doesn't really have a big no, star. But it's, it's like a, a lot of. It's an ensemble picture. Oh, very much so. No, it doesn't even have an Oscar nominee. Well, yeah. What kind of director are we talking about here? Uh, eh. anonymous. Not that well known. Yeah, he's made some movies. Oh, he directed. Oh, no, he produced a lot of big movies. Interesting. Yeah, the director's not going to help you on this one. Is it John Avnet? No. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a black movie. It's like oh, a, Soul Food. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I mean, we were. I was running out of clues I could yeah. give you. Oh, there we go. Have you seen Soul Food? Uh, no, I haven't. It's a good movie. Who directed that one? George Tillman Jr. Ah. Yes. Who's like, you know, he like made Men of Honor, right? Yes, Tillman like, Jr. Yes. Um, all right. Number four is an underrated uh, action thriller set in the wild of the era. Set in the wild? Set in the wilds. Like the jungles you're talking about? No. The forest? Sure. It's cold. It's a cold movie? Yeah. From 1997. Yeah. Big action star? Uh, yeah, and it also no, not a big action star, big big ish star. Uh, it's also it's got the same name as a a, a famous guitarist. The Edge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. Yeah, Lee Tamahori. Yeah, what if I'd come up with a funnier joke for that? I don't know. If I said like Richie Sambora. Number five is going to be the best episode of a possible upcoming series, depending on how the bracket goes. Number five. Yeah, it like is like. It's a film from a very famous director. The Parent Trap? No. And I think it would be the most interesting episode of, of that miniseries, of his miniseries. 1997. Yeah. You're saying possible is in... One of the winners, like one of the final four. It's w- one of the people who's in the final four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babe Pig in the City? No. Uh, one of the stars is very funny. We were just talking about it. Very funny. That's that's a confusing. You're not going to get that clue. No, America's number one humor, Sean Penn. Yes, <laughs> bingo. So wow. what's the movie? Oh God, I'm trying to remember. There were so many pen comedies around that. Time. Well, so he he didn't do Liar Liar. He let no. Carrie take that one. He's um, a supporting character in this movie. Supporting not the lead character in 1997. Yuckster. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it's a director we would cover. Yeah. It's not a Michael Mann? No. Other one. Oh, oh, oh. It's The, the game. game. The Game. David Fincher's The Game. Mm. Which uh, we made $5 million. Are you game? <laughs> sure. That was the Jumanji's hat. I love that movie. Uh, we're going to go see Ready Player One tomorrow. And uh, that's the end of the episode. Emily, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes. Ready Player One is fine great can't wait to see it can't wait for this hot take to come out in (laughs) july (laughs) it's okay (laughs) c plus on a scale from ready player one to ready player 10 what would you give it (laughs) give it a ready player two (laughs) really (laughs) that's not so good that doesn't sound fine (laughs) no i you know it's it's uh it's It's like a ready player five it were this is the thing this is you were saying something to this effect before anybody had seen it at south by david it uh you tweeted this. It, it is not going to not work. It's a Spielberg movie. Right, like right, right. it's not going to be incompetent. It's going right, to take right. you from the beginning to end, and you're going to feel satisfied by the story. But it's also not Starship Troopers. 
It's no right. Starship Troopers. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that is a bummer. That's a bummer. It's too bad, Stephen. And I never read the book, so I didn't even know like what it could necessarily I'm, change. I've been told that it's a major improvement on the book, but I've also been told that's a huge low bar. Yeah, we could talk more about this off podcast. There was one thing I was like shocked by yeah. that apparently is just from the book. That I we'll was also like, we'll talk more about this four months earlier in the episode that you've already listened to. Yeah. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me again. Six Timers Club! Yeah, blankies! <laughs> you get a pen this time. Come and time. get me, Lawson! <laughs> <laughs> um, Night Call. Night Call. Right here in the Audio Boom Network. Produced by the producer, Ben. BH. Honestly. Mr. Uh, Oz. It, 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 yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, listen to us. We'll we'll still be making our podcast. It's an amazing podcast. It's actually it's one of the few podcasts where I have to listen right when I download. If you like cults and aliens, listen to our show. And, and also thank you. Slimes. Thank you. And ghost stories. Stuff that we were talking about today, Slime. your piece on Annihilation is one of the best pieces of film writing great. I've read all year. Emily's great. People should Google that. Sure. And also That's everything great. else you write. Yeah. Um, She's also a nice friend. <laughs> and that's her number I one I like getting credit. dinner with her sometimes and <laughs> catching up. At the end of the day, yeah. you're a quality person. I'm <laughs> but only at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, at right, the beginning right. of the day. At the beginning of the day. You're you're a away. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I go, oh, that Emily's a quality person. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. a real, it's been fun a, as always. A real yeah. knight among dragons. Thank the people. Hey, look, here's who I got to thank. Andrew Gudo for our social media. Joe Bone, Pat Rounds for our artwork. Lane Montgomery for our theme song. Go to blankystarreddit.com for some real nerdy shit. Yeah. And as always. Uh, yes. Uh, next week, tune in for Ride with the Devil sure. with Peter Labuza. That's right. And as always... I'm very sorry to inform you that Emily was not able to retrieve her school paper written on the ice storm because there's a great track record of school papers being read on this podcast.